From the southern belle of a city, New Orleans, Louisiana, a happy new year and welcome to the Superdome for one of the most attractive college football games of this era. The 43rd Sugar Bowl game being played inside the dome, matching the University of Pittsburgh Panthers and the University of Georgia Bulldogs. Pittsburgh, 11-0 on the season, ranked first in the nation among the great college teams that we've seen this year. Georgia, 10-1, ranked fourth and fifth, the Southeastern Conference champions, and here come the Panthers. Pittsburgh, out of the East, a team put together by Johnny Majors and his coaching staff four years ago, and here they are today playing for the ultimate achievement, the national championship. And a happy new year from all of us here at ABC Sports, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon to some, good morning to others. We're delighted you could join us here in the Superdome. I'm Keith Jackson along with Coach Eric Parsegian, formerly of Notre Dame. And the Georgia Bulldogs have just made their entrance. And I think you might feel that a few more folks came from Georgia than from Pennsylvania for a game. But, Era, I think this is the most attractive Super Bowl game we have had since you brought Notre Dame in to play Alabama in 73. Keith, we've got two fundamentally sound football teams here. And I think emotion and motivation is going to be a vital factor for the Pittsburgh Ball Club, a potential national championship, undefeated season, culmination of four improving years under Johnny Majors. For the Southeastern Conference champions, the Georgia Bulldogs, a team of great character as we witnessed in the Florida game, their comeback victory, a great challenge in trying to stop Tony Dorsett, the Heisman Trophy winner, a young man who is the leading rusher in the country, leading ground gainer in 1976, leading scorer. So they've got their hands, or they got their hands full in trying to stop Dorset in this Pittsburgh ball club. The Georgia Bulldogs have had sort of a low profile in preparing for this game, though. They really have. It. Uh, Pittsburgh has been getting most of the ink in uh, in town in the in the pregame uh, activity, and Georgia has been taking a low profile in this football game. And the other thing that's interesting is that the different training. Uh, Johnny Majors has sort of had an open, loose type of camp, and. Vince Dooley has had a tighter string on his players. So we'll see what happens this afternoon. It's going to be a great football game. I'll tell you one thing. Both teams are pumped up for a New Year's Day. This should be one of the classic matchups of all time. The undefeated Pittsburgh Panthers playing for the national championship and the University of Georgia Bulldogs. Only one loss marring their record in 76. We're going to put it on the tee in just a moment. The Pittsburgh Panthers undefeated will receive the football for this 48th annual Sugar Bowl game against the Georgia Bulldogs and now let's set the offensive team that's put together by the head coach Johnny Majors the tailback out of Tennessee has come on to be one of the outstanding young coaches Gordon Jones number 24 wide receiver John Hanhauser offensive tackle number 64 number 77 is Matt Carroll a guard number 50 John Pelosi at center Tom Brazosa 67 an offensive guard number 76 George Message, offensive tackle, and number 81, Jim Corbett, tight end. The quarterback for the Pittsburgh Panthers, Matt Cavanaugh, number 12. And, of course, the great Tony Dorsett Heisman Trophy winner, number 33. Elliot Walker, number 34, at running back. And Willie Taylor, number 49, will be the flanker for Pittsburgh. And the place kicker, number 5, Carson Long. The offensive unit for the Panthers and lined up to receive the kickoff. It is Willie Taylor, number 29. Larry Sims, number 23. Willie Taylor is the man that Pittsburgh likes to get the ball to. And it's Alan Levitt to kick off for the Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia in red and Pittsburgh in white. And here we go. It's a kick that carries deep into the end zone, and Sims will not return it. It'll be Pittsburgh first down at the 20-yard line. The defensive unit for the Georgia Bulldogs. Dirk Russell called them junkyard dogs, and they're famous for it now. Lawrence Kraft, Ronnie Swopes. They're big, they're quick. Jeff Sanders, Adel Georgia. Dickie Clark, the other defensive end from Rossville. The linebackers are Jeff Lewis, Jimmy Griffith. And Ben Zambezi, the linebackers particularly not big, but they are very quick. Elliot Walker, number 34, is in the backfield with Tony Dorsett. As they split the backs, the first offensive play of the game, and it goes obviously to Tony Dorsett. He goes for about two, maybe three yards before Ronnie Swopes and Jeff Sanders make the tackle for Georgia. Second down and seven coming up. The defensive secondary for Georgia cornerbacks, Bobby Thompson. Bill Krug is the rover. You'll see him all over the football field. Mark Mitchell, the little man, he's only about 5'8 or so, weighs about 170 pounds. Johnny Henderson, another cornerback at 6 footer, 185 pounds. Again, not too big, but very quick and hungry. 
It is second down and seven. The pitch goes wide for Tony Dorsey. He's cut down back at the 21-yard line on a driving tackle by number 61, Jeff Lewis, linebacker from the outside with Lawrence Kraft, the defensive left end. Temper, tempo, enthusiasm, fervor, call it what you want. Boy, there is plenty of it here. <laughs> Great start. The football is sitting at the 22-yard line. It'll be third down for Pittsburgh at the 22 as Bob Hutton comes in replacing Tony Dorsett. It's an obvious passing situation. They put two fullbacks in the backfield now to give Matt Cavanaugh perhaps more greater protection. Out of the veer, both teams are veer teams, and Cavanaugh runs the draw. It goes to Bob Hutton, and Hutton comes to the 27-yard line. Georgia yelling fumble. We've had no call yet from the officials. The referee is Vince Buckley, and it'll be Pittsburgh's ball. Vince Buckley is the referee. Matt Gorgeous, the umpire. Bob Jones, the headlinesman. Glenn Lipman, the line judge. Larry Coven, the field judge. Randall Clay, the back judge. And now it is punting time for Pittsburgh. The series record between the two teams reflected there. Larry Swider averaging just about 45 yards per putt. Hits it. It comes back to Mark Mitchell. And Mitchell squirms from one. It'll be Georgia's ball. First down at the 31-yard line. 42-yard punt, Glenn Meyer made the tackle. The Georgia offensive unit up front. Steve Davis is the split in. Steve Collier, George Collins, Joe Tereshinsky, Joel Paris, Mike Wilson, and Ulysses Norris. In the backfield, it's number 10, Ray Goff. Kevin McLee, a Pennsylvania lad. At running back, Al Pollard and Gene Washington will be the flanker. Ray Goff, number 10. Out of the veer come the Bulldogs. The Southeastern Conference champions going down the line. It is Goff keeping it turning out field. And Ray gets three yards to the 34-yard line before Don Parrish brings him down. The defensive unit for the Pittsburgh Panthers. They line up this way, and it's a very good one. Ed Wilanowski, Don Parrish, Al Romano, Randy Holloway, and Cecil Johnson. The linebacker Al Weatherington and Jimbo Kramer left to right, and the defensive secondary is also a very good one, led by Bob Jury, who had nine interceptions this past season. It is second down and seven. Both teams getting three yards on the first offensive play of the game. Golf keeping. Ray tries to turn it. They've got him right at the line of scrimmage. No gain as number 59 Weatherington is there, along with Cecil Johnson and Randy Holloway. Keith, you know, we're seeing a mirrored offensive system between the two teams, both of them using the veer, and you wonder whether or not they both know so much about their attacks, whether it'll become a defensive football game. It'll be interesting to see. All right, here's Ray Goff now, number 10, settling in on third down and seven. Goff goes, wants to throw, penalty flag is down. He throws, the pass is caught. There is a penalty flag, however, back at the line of scrimmage. The pass complete up to about the 44-yard line of Georgia to Steve Davis, number 80, coming across from split in, and the penalty will go against the Bulldogs. Have a look at Steve Davis, a young man out of Maryland. Davis hurling into a lot of traffic, then stepped out of it, and the ball was drilled right in between two Pittsburgh defenders. But it didn't count. They back him up five yards to the 29-yard line for illegal procedure, and it is now third down and 12. Stop straight back. Good blocking. Short of his first down, he is brought down by Arnie Weatherington, number 59, who chased him all the way and finally ran him down up at the 37-yard line. There's Vince Dooley wearing the cap. The reason he's wearing the cap is, is all of his hair is gone because he met his promise to the Junkyard Dogs that if they won the Southeastern Conference Championship, he'd cut his hair, and he did. <laughs> Here's the punt by Dukes. Beautiful kick. <laughs> Good one, Beauty. Fielded, and down goes. The pit return man, Willie Taylor, inside the 20-yard line. A 47-yard punt. No score in the first quarter. The 43rd annual Sugar Bowl game, Pittsburgh and Georgia. This ABC sports exclusive being brought to you by Cotton Incorporated, the fiber company of America's cotton producers. The more cotton, the better you feel. 
by Chevrolet and Chevrolet dealers who invite you to see and drive Chevrolet's totally new six-passenger car, the new Chevrolet. And by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. And we have no score with 10.57 to go inside the Superdome in New Orleans. Second possession of the ball game for the Pitt Panthers. The football just short of the 20-yard line. The ball is handed over the left side of the line, and it's a good offensive surge for Tony Dorsett as the 192-pound senior from Aliquippa is brought down by Jimmy Griffith, 47, and Ben Zambezi, 44, linebackers for Georgia. This is only the second time, Keith, that Pittsburgh has looked at what we call an even defense or a wide six. There is no man over the center's nose. Once in a while, when the split end is off, they'll move a man over, but this is a little bit different look than they, are normal, that they, no, than they normally see during the course of the year. And here comes an unbalanced line. Give Dorsett five. Second down and five out of the eye. The pitch goes to Tony. He gets one block. He gets two blocks. He's cut down hard by 44, Ben Zambezi, a junior from Macon. Watch Mr. Zambezi doing his thing. Very quick. Zambezi is the, the leading tackler on this football team, and he can really move. Number 44, as you see, roaming to the ball. This was a pitch out to Dorsett. Here he comes flowing all the way from the weak side linebacker spot and makes the play short of a first down. Football is sitting right at the 27-yard line. It is third down, and they need two and a half yards. Georgia jumping around on the defense. They give it to Dorsett. He's hit head on right at the 30-yard line. Really popped in again. Georgia is calling for the ball. That might be a fumble. That's the second time Georgia has been suggestive, and the officials confirm it. Ronnie Swope, number 78. I'm not sure they have confirmed it yet, Eric. No, I haven't seen an official give the... the well, it looks like they're going to give it to Pittsburgh. Yep. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this, Georgia sure is doing a lot of lobbying down around well, that ball. I guarantee you there were 11 of them pointing. <laughs> Here's uh, Jimmy Griffith, the uh, number two tackle on the football team. He steps in, pulls in with Zambini, Zambezi, I should say. And they stopped Dorsett. We can't see whether the ball comes out here, whether it's late, but at least the officials gave the ball back to Pittsburgh, and it's a... First down. First down. Right on the 30-yard line for the Panthers. The double wide receivers to the left side now as Kavanaugh goes down the line, penalty flags, the pitch is outside to Dorsett. He's pinned in. He's caught behind the line of scrimmage, but being the talent that he is, slips out of there and gets at least across the 30 for a yard. Bill Krug, number 42, was the man making life miserable for Tony. But it's offside against Georgia, five-yard penalty coming up against the Dogs. That'll be the second five-yarder they have been tacked with so far in the game. You know, the junkyard dogs are really quick. They're not that big. Ronnie Swopes being the biggest then, of course, it's Ronnie in the runs. But I'll guarantee you this, that it may be that Pittsburgh has not looked at a team quite as quick as this Georgia Bulldog defense is. They've looked very good thus far in the two series. Vince Buckley indicating offside against Georgia. Little bit too eager. Just a fraction of a second. It is second down. It'll be first down and five from the 35 after the five-yard penalty. They send Taylor way wide to the left side this time. And Kavanaugh hands it to the up man, the fullback, Elliot Walker, 200-pounder out of Miami, and he's across the 40 for another Pittsburgh first down, and here is Jim Lampley. Thank you, Keith. One element of this game that's been a subject of discussion here in New Orleans all week is the difference in the way the two teams prepared for the game. Pittsburgh's players all week, a 2 a.m. curfew until a couple nights ago and it got a little earlier. They were prowling Bourbon Street and could be seen out carousing throughout the week. Georgia's players in by 11 every night, tucked into bed and sleeping. Some people think it could be a factor, but John Major says his team is the most mature team in college football and it'll have no effect whatsoever. All right, Jimmy, double wide left again as Matt Cavanaugh sets the Panthers in white. Georgia jumps up into a six-man front pitch to Dorset, missed by one. Number 47, Griffith misses him. Dorset, they finally run him down behind the line of scrimmage, and there were five Georgia Bulldogs that had a shot at him, and finally Swopes got him. He's really keying on Dorset. One of the things that uh, is interesting here, uh, Pittsburgh is going into an unbalanced line trying to surprise Georgia by putting more people on one side of the line than the other and then giving Dorset some additional blockers. But the Georgia Bulldogs are adjusting to it without any problem, this, at least this early in the ballgame. Of course, one of the things about Dorset, he's like Ricky Bell in this respect. He just gets stronger and stronger as the game goes on. Loss on the play. Back to the 36-yard line. 
Cavanaugh back to throw. He's looking for Taylor. He's over the middle. He's struck with the pass, and it's almost intercepted by Ben Zambese, just off of his fingers. There's Zambese again. He reads the pass. He comes back to the strong side hook. Beautiful position here. He jumps up and just deflects the ball. The ball was on target by Cavanaugh, just over his head, deflects it, and almost intercepts it. All right. It is third down now. Pittsburgh's got to go to the Georgia 49 to get a first down. The ball is at the 36. They need 15 yards on third down. That Kavanaugh to throw. He gets his pass off to the sideline. The pass is complete. It is caught by Gordon Jones, who is a very dangerous man, number 24. And he's right about first down territory. Here's Jones uh, driving right straight up the field. Kavanaugh rolled away from him to pull a secondary. Jones puts a good move on, comes down and turns on a curl hook. And this is a throwback pattern. Kavanaugh rolled to his right and then threw back. And it is almost knocked down. Jones run. puts a good move on. And gets the first down or they're going to measure for it here? It's pretty, it's pretty gonna close. Going to have to measure. It is right about the Georgia 49-yard line. It's that Not much. Sure. Would you gamble? It's fourth down. Well, I don't think I would in a game like this. I don't know. Let's see what Johnny does. Kind of an interesting thing going into the ball game here for Georgia's number 77. He's an offensive lineman, but he's going in uh, anticipating that Pittsburgh may gamble. They're going for it. He's big uh, Mark Wilson, the All-American tackle. And they're going to go. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Georgia puts Wilson in defensively to get a little more heft up front. There's Johnny. Go! It'll be close, but I think he's got it. He took it over the right side, going in behind Tom Brazoza and George Messick. Pelusi, Brazoza, Willemowski, and a couple of other of the Pittsburgh oh. players have had the flu. And uh, not quite up to their optimum level. But it is good for a first down as Kavanaugh took it right in behind the right side lineman. Pittsburgh now with three first downs in the game. And so far, Georgia has only had the ball one time. And still has not gained the first down. From the 49-yard line, Kavanaugh hit up the line of scrimmage by Jeff Lewis. And that's the third hit in the game for Jeff Lewis. He's a number three tackler on his football team, had 87 total hits during the course of the year. And interestingly enough, he's a top scholar, a 3.89 average. So besides being a heck of a football player, he's a super student. Got a heck of a kid. Not that big either. The old Mississippi curling through the grand old lady of a city, New Orleans, Louisiana. It's cold outside, about 32 degrees. We're inside in the dome on second down and eight. The pass over the middle. Beautiful pass to Elliott Walker coming out of the backfield. First down and goal to go for the Pitt Panthers at the 10-yard line. Johnny Henderson brought him down. 36 yards on the pass play. Great call, Keith. They were in a double zone, only two safety men back. And Pittsburgh sent the two wide receivers right straight down the field, and the tight end just drove right into the middle between the two, and the two defenders could not cover the three receivers. Here it is, right in the heart of it. Here comes the two defenders back to the inside. The to try to stop. First down and goal to Ball is nose of the football is sitting right at the 10-yard line. Bob Hutton comes in that fullback now, replacing Elliott Walker. Going to give Elliott a breather. Gordon Jones goes wide to the left side. Taylor to the right side. Dorsett split with Hutton in the backfield. The pitch is back to Tony. Tony's at the five. Nope, the six-yard line where he is cut down by Ben Zambezi. Timing was just right for Matt Cavanaugh. He did not pitch that ball until he was absolutely forced to do so. And uh, Dorsett got a good lead buck. But take a look at Zambezi, who is some kind of football player. He's all over the field. Here he is going number 44 here, coming from the right side linebacker all the way across the field on a pitch out and making the play on Dorset right there and for a five-yard gain. Outside the five-yard line, second down and goal to go for the Panthers. Kavanaugh keeping on the option. Look out. Turns, touchdown! John Henhauser, number 64, knocked Ronnie Swopes out of the way, and Kavanaugh optioned it in. Beautifully executed. You could see it from upstairs here. You could see Kavanaugh had the daylight. He took it, and there wasn't anyone close. Well executed, well blocked play.
Carson Long, number five, who has set a ton of NCAA kicking records in his career at Pittsburgh out of the hold of Larry Slider for the extra point. It is good. Here's Kavanaugh's run for the first touchdown of the ball game. This comes down the line on just a true option with a lead blocker rather than a fake. Well blocked, he cuts it to the inside right here, and there's no one at home. Takes it into the end zone for the first touchdown of the game. It's 7-0 Pitt. Will Muhammad Ali ever fight again? Join Howard Cosell tomorrow for an exclusive live interview with the heavyweight champion on his boxing future, plus the spectacular Vienna Ice Review and race number one in the World Series of Auto Racing tomorrow on the Sunday edition of ABC's Wide World of Sports. Oh, the Pittsburgh folks are dancing. Georgia Bulldogs are going to get their hands on the ball now for the second time in this first quarter with 5.44 to go and Pitt going 80 yards for the first touchdown. Pittsburgh kicks off to Gene Washington, number 82. He's a wide receiver. He's the deep man. Carson Long. Will hit it for the Panthers. High, high kick. It's going to be short. It's up high, though. Willie McClendon. Oh, he broke through that first punch and brought it out to about the 23 yard line. Brought it back 13 yards. Pittsburgh scoring play 80 yards, 13 plays. They used 5 13. Georgia has been a long drive football team much of the year. They've gone outside, uh, they've gone from 60 yards or more 28 times for scores this year. Now they've been a plugging type team, grinding out that three and four and five yards and then coming up with a split end reverse or something like that to get the big play. Washington wide left, Goff the quarterback. Goff coming down the line with it. Here's the ball. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Bad pitch out. And the ball is covered. By Goff. He delayed too long in giving the ball to Kevin McLee, and McLee had no place to go with it. Good defense by Pittsburgh. They had everybody on site. They had the uh, dive man covered on the counter option. They had the quarterback covered, and they had the pitch man covered. They did a good job of defensing it. Loss is back to the 20 yard line for three yards. Second down, 13, Georgia. Hit leading 7 0. Behind the line of scrimmage by Arnie Weatherington, number 59, a shooting linebacker. He's a number two tackler on this Pittsburgh team with 111 total hits. Now here's Jim. Before the season, Coach Vince Dooley of Georgia promised the media and fans in Georgia that should the Bulldogs win the Southeastern Conference Championship, he'd shave his head. Well, two weeks ago at a huge pep rally before this game in Georgia, Vince Dooley shaved his head. And he's come here down in New Orleans and been at practice with it every day. And now five of the Georgia assistant coaches have the shaved heads to go with their players' shaved heads. Keith? And Pittsburgh's about to scalp them again unless they get something going. Here's the bomb as Goff delivers it intended for Washington. It's way over his head. Out of sight. It'll be fourth down. Ray should have waited there a little bit. He had, <clears throat> excuse me, he had the receiver breaking open, but he overthrew him. It might have been a little lack of coordination on the route. Bucky Dills, who hit his first punt for 47 yards, is standing back at the five-yard line. Deep is Willie Taylor for Pittsburgh. Left footer gets it off. Oh, another beauty. He really hangs the ball and forces Taylor to go fair catch inside the 35-yard line. He hung it up there a little bit more than five seconds, and he hits another 47-yarder. We have four minutes and two seconds to play in the first quarter at the Superdome of the Sugar Bowl, and Pitt leads at 7-0. Here is Vince Dooley with the shaved head we were talking about earlier. Of course, the original idea came from the Georgia defensive coordinator, Irk Russell, whose head has been shaven for years and whose players did it to emulate him. Dooley has a toupee, which he's been wearing to public functions. Last night, he appeared for the first time without it and promised to go on naturel today for our cameras. <laughs> All right. At the 33-yard line now. First down for the Panthers. They lead 7-0, and Matt Cavanaugh hands the ball to Tony Dorsett. Look out. That's why he won the Heisman Trophy. First down at the Pittsburgh 49-yard line. It's amazing the number of tackles that he breaks. Actually, it was 
fairly well blocked, but Dorsett broke through two tackles, picked up super yardage. As you'll watch here on the replay, just on a tailback off tackle play, there's one block tackler. There he shakes off another and picks up good yardage on the play. Three Bulldogs had their hands on him before they finally got him down. First down, Panthers, 49-yard line. Kavanaugh gives to the up man, Walker. Elliott Walker, who had the big play. The pass reception on the touchdown drive goes down to the Georgia 48 for three yards, second and seven coming on. He swoops the tackle. And there's the statistical career on Tony Dorsett at Pittsburgh. 6,082 yards in four years. Boy, important that is to remember huge. four years. And <laughs> the most important number, of course, is that 5.7 average per carry. We're all glad to see him go at Notre Dame, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> second down, seven. Georgia 48, Kavanaugh, Dorsett, missed by one. He has that faculty for cutting it in. Now, there were three red shirts over there ready to bury him, but he cut it back just enough to avoid the solid hit. There was nothing there. He avoided the solid hit and also avoided losing yardage. And that is really the mark of a super back. Nine carries, 28 yards. Ray Goff, the Georgia quarterback, who's yet to get his team on track. Georgia's only gained four yards so far in the game. At the Bulldogs. 47 yard line. It is third down. They need six. Kavanaugh whips it. Taylor overthrows him. Matt Kavanaugh missed his man, the wide receiver, slanting in. And this program is special exclusive of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. The bald head has become the in thing, <laughs> at well, least in Athens, Georgia. A lot of Kojaks. Swider's punt, a rifle shot into the end zone. It'll be Georgia first down at the 20 yard line. That's a 47 yarder by Swider. And he knocks it right on off the field of play. Here's Jim again. This is Jackie Sherrill, the man who's been the head coach at Washington State, and next year will inherit the number one team at Pittsburgh. Jackie, some people think that you might not want Pittsburgh to win the game, leave you that pressure of coming back for national champions, but I know you want it. Yeah, very badly. It's uh, for the young men, they've worked awful hard for four years, and it means an awful lot to them. You'll have some athletes coming back from yes, that group. Yes, we have a very good nucleus, and we have to have a good recruiting year, but uh, we have some good kids coming back. Good luck. Thank you very much, Jim. Okay, Keith Jackson. Georgia first down. For the and Kevin McLee and Al Pollard in the setback's position. They go to the fullback for the first time. Pollard, and he sticks his head in there for about a yard and a half. He's a 200-pounder from Macon. Not too fast, but very steady, hard-hitting football player. A couple of these Pittsburghers are going to be going with us to Hawaii for the Hula Bowl. Al Romano, the middle guard, and Tony Dorsett will be in the Hula Bowl. And you'll see it next Saturday live at 4 Eastern time over most of these ABC stations. Second down, call it eight yards to go for the Bulldogs. Oh! Ray Goff has a lot of room to run. Out to the 33, the first first down of the ball game for the Bulldogs. As Jim Kramer brought him down for Pittsburgh. Ray Goff put a good move on to get the first down. Interestingly, interestingly enough, uh, Georgia has gone to the air. Goff has gone back to pass on a number of occasions early in the ball game. I wonder if they feel that uh, they're going to have to throw the ball more to loosen up this Pittsburgh defense. The old city relatively quiet here today as New Orleans comes down to a standstill for this big matchup to end the 1976 college football season. Dome is full, some 75,000 people. Ray Goff looks over, doesn't like what he sees, calls time with one minute and 33 seconds to go in the first quarter. Here's Jim. A little while ago, we saw Arnie Weatherington make a great play for Pittsburgh. He's one of the most interesting stories in this game. A guy who, a year ago, was involved in a difficult legal scrape involving some stolen television sets. Arnie pled guilty, went to coach John Majors after having not been with Pittsburgh team in spring practice, and asked to be put back on the team. Majors gave him the chance, and all of the people who surround him now say that Arnie's a great testament to the good forces that can come about as a result of participation in this sport. He works with a youth counseling program in Pittsburgh, says that he made a mistake, has learned his lesson, and wants to pay it all back now. Arnie Weatherington from Miami Jackson High School. We've had a change too, Jim, in that our list of officials has been corrected. Ed Ward is the back judge working the ball game. Of course, they're playing on artificial turf here in the Dome. So we're assured of a comfortable setting with the temperature last night dropping down into the 20s here in New Orleans after having a couple of very warm days. So we can be very happy that we are inside. 
for the ball game today because the temperature probably will not get out of the 30s. You know, uh, Keith Ray Goff, a sign of a well-coached football team, Ray Goff had a play on. Pittsburgh overloaded the defense to the double flankers, and he elected to take a timeout in this first quarter yet, uh, not to waste it down. And uh, I think it's good thinking on his part, particularly early in the ball game. All right, this is Gene Washington to the left. First down, mark it on the 34-yard line of Georgia. Turns, wants to throw it. Doesn't have a chance. James Kramer, number 58, a 218-pound senior from Jeffersonboro, Pennsylvania, gets his man. He wanted to throw the ball again. He had a counteraction and came down the line looking for the receivers before they were open. You there see was the, Jimbo. Right. You see 14 Jeff Delaney coming in here on a safety blitz. Washington was on a fly pattern, but he was looking short. Second down, 12 from the 32. Goff still got it. McLee trailing. Goff got to keep it. That's a play they fumbled a while ago. He unloaded it again to McLee, but he really doesn't give Kevin much of a chance to do anything with it. Well, he, uh, the defense is, uh, the Pittsburgh defense is recovering so well. They're overloading this side, and it's very tough to uh, run an option play against the defense that Pittsburgh is showing them. You got a flag on the field, and you had a big pile going into the sidelines. I don't know where or why or what it might be. It could be a, a late hit over on the sidelines. It could be a little bit of a scuffle erupted on the sidelines, too. Yeah, I can't tell. Uh, Personal foul, it's against yeah. Pittsburgh. It's against Georgia. Oh. That'll wipe it off. We'll do yeah. it again. Offsetting penalties. Well, there's fervor nice. and some fever. Couldn't see it uh, from here. I don't know whether it happened on the sideline. Here's the, is this Felder 37 coming over? Let's see. Oh, yeah, he's clear. Yeah, he's clear out of bounds here. He should have pulled up. They were way out of bounds there. That's the. Apparently some Georgia going. partisan retaliated on this. Somewhere, <laughs> yeah. At offsetting penalty, it is third down. The football is marked just short of the 34. Goff gives it inside. And McLee goes to the 39-yard line. That is short of a first down. McLee finally getting a little bit of room up the middle to run with it. And uh, we're told now that uh, it was Kevin McLee who did the retaliating for Georgia to effect uh, the second call or the second penalty flag. So whatever. Here's Georgia punting. Bucky Dilts all day to hit it. 47 oh. yards on two kicks, and he hangs it up till it gets frosty. Fair catch by Taylor. Back at the 20-yard line again. He hung it five seconds. 41 yards on the punt. Well, coming into the ball game, uh, Pittsburgh had the edge statistically in the kicking with Larry Swider of Pittsburgh averaging 44.8 and Bucky Diltz only 39.4. But in his three kicks here, he is really booming that ball up high and there's no return and he's getting good distance. People have not run the ball back against Diltz much this year. He gets it up there so long that you hear all those thundering hooves coming down. It's always great for field position, too, as you see. Mark it on the 21-yard line now for the white-shirted Pitt Panthers. They lead with 21 seconds to go in the first quarter, 7 to nothing. Matt Cavanaugh gives it to his fullback up front. It was Dorset. And it is Dorset working out of the fullback position. I remember against Penn State, Dorset was relatively quiet in the first half. But in the second half, Majors moved him up into the fullback uh, position of the close back out of the eye, and he had a big second half. Time running out. First quarter. We've played one. It's pit 7 nothing over Georgia. We're ready now for the second quarter of play. The 43rd annual Sugar Bowl game in the Superdome. Second time the Sugar Bowl game's been played under the dome. And Pittsburgh leading 7 to nothing. The numbers for that first quarter give Pitt a decided edge. Second down, eight yards to go for the Panthers from the 23-yard line. Tony Dorsett for the ball. Good defensive play over there. I think you're going to get a holding call here against Pittsburgh because they had a couple of Georgia defenders hung up. Lawrence Kraft kept stringing the play out. Nope, it's an illegal procedure call mm. against Pittsburgh. But they, they stuck those blocks in there so long on Kraft. I thought somebody had him with a shirt tail. They went to the unbalanced line again, uh, which they're trying to catch Georgia off balance, but Georgia's doing a good job on it. You can see here on the uh, statistics that uh, Pittsburgh definitely dominated the first quarter. Five first downs to 155 yards to 26. Total yardage of 106 to 26. Offensive plays double 21 to 11. No turnovers, and that might be a factor later in this game. 
Again, we have offsetting penalties. They call an offside against Georgia to offset the procedure call against Pitt. So you have offsetting penalties. It's third down from the 24-yard line. They need seven yards as Kavanaugh sets the throw, goes over the middle to Taylor. He shakes oh. one. He may go. Run down by Johnny Henderson. Taylor ran through what appeared to be a good chance for a tackle. He just broke it, took off, and it was Johnny Henderson that finally got it. Here's the play. And four down area. Now, of course, here's Kavanaugh rolling out. He almost gets blindsided here. You can't see it. There's the ball right on target to Willie, J uh, Willie Taylor. He shakes a tackle, and it looks like he might go. Fumbles the ball as he hits, but the, it was called dead. Let's see. Boom. Came out after he hit the ground. 39 yards on the play. Three out of five in passing for Kavanaugh. 90 yards. First down fifth. Georgia 37-yard line. Kavanaugh. Run down just about the line of scrimmage by Jeff Lewis and Jim Griffith. You're interested in knowing how uh, Dorsett is doing in the first quarter. He carried the ball 10 times for 31 yards. Pitt leading 7-0 with 13.50 to go in the first half. Panthers averaging better than 32 points per game this season. Ball is at the 37-yard line of Georgia. Second down, nine. Walker and Dorset are the setback. <laughs> Kavanaugh throws that little short pop intended for Gordon Jones and complete through it low. Yeah, Jones wide open. Say it's real hard throw. Coming to the left for a right-hander and then throwing against the grain of your body is a very difficult throw. It's much easier to execute when you go down to the right side, but they liked what they saw on the left, and he just underthrew the ball, threw the ball into the ground. He had him open. Third down and nine yards to go for Pittsburgh at the Georgia 37. Green dumps it off. Oh. Dorsett drops it. They set up a screen for Tony. Oh. And he tried to turn too soon. Looked like they had it set up well, too. I think Dorsett would have come up with some yardage on that play. And so it is fourth down for the football setting at the 37-yard line of Georgia. And Carson Long is in the ball game. Hurry up, let's go. His longest field goal this year, 50 yards against Temple. But he has a leg that can take it beyond 50. This will be from the 44 or a 54-yarder. Inside the dome. Oh, it's close and it's short. Just short. One yard short. So Georgia holds and takes over with 13.20 to go in the first half trailing 7 0. If Pittsburgh had any need at all for extra incentive in this game, they got it this week from a very unusual source. All week long, Coach John Majors has been very upset about the things that have been said on the West Coast by Bo Schembechler and by John Robinson about how the Rose Bowl ought to be played for the number one ranking. Last night, Majors, with his final quote, says, those people say knowledgeable football people know the Rose Bowl is for number one. I'm not going to say I'm a knowledgeable football person, but we're number one, and if we win this, we ought to be national champions. Keith? I don't think there's any question they will be if they win this game. First down for Georgia at the 20. Ray Goff back to throw. Turns it up the middle. Goes to the 28-yard line, maybe the 27, where he's brought down. Randy Holloway, number 70, was there to get him. No, Ray Goff did not pass that often uh, this year. He only threw the ball 29 times at 18 completions. Matt Robinson is the man generally considered the passer. Right, that's team. exactly right. But he turned it upfield for a little bit more than seven yards. It'll be second down and a long two, short three, whatever you want to call it. Gives the ball away, and there's a first down as Kevin McLee breaks it to the 40-yard line. And the first time in a ball game that the Georgia offensive front has opened up Pittsburgh. Take a look at Kevin McLee on the replay. I say, yes, Romano's the middle guard and comes to the side. Now watch him go right by him, right here. Romano stunned it to the outside, and McLee took the inside on him and picked up the first down, out to the 40. Mark it on to 39, first down Georgia. This time the ball goes to Pollard, 
And Al Hollard wiggles it up to the 43-yard line. and got about four yards. And tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern time, the premiere of the Sunday edition of ABC's Wide World of Sports. Live interview with Muhammad Ali, the Vienna Ice Review. And we'll have the World Series of Auto Racing, the International Race of Champions. 4.30 Eastern Time, 3.30 Central and Pacific over most of these ABC stations. Second down and six. Ball goes to McClee again. And he pops in there for a couple of yards and runs right into Al Romano, 225-pound senior from Solvay, New York. Third straight time they test tested that inside area. And... Uh, I think they want to grind that ball out if they possibly can maintain possession of it. Don't think you can do it against Romano, Holloway, and Perry. It's going to be tough good. duty. Tough duty. Georgia trailing 7 0. Just now beginning to show some offense. Goff keeps it. Gives it to McClee, running to the sidelines. He shoved out of bounds up around the 46. Close to the 47. He is short, however, of the first down. James Wilson, number 21, pushed him out. Good uh, defensive uh, support by Jim Wilson. Left cornerback came up very rapidly and avoided the first down. And of course, this forces George into a kicking position. On fourth and three. Let's see if Lovett puts another one up in the air. Dilts. Bucky. Oh, 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 hit the screen with it. I think we've yeah. got an illegal procedure call on that because uh, the, the official throws the flag only to indicate touchback to the 20-yard line where Pittsburgh will have it. 53-yard punt by Bucky Doe. There is the screen I referred to. That's the indoor television screen that hangs up over the playing field here. And if my memory serves me correctly, that thing's 110 feet, I think they said, or something like that. Anyway, Bucky Dilts almost hit it with that punt. <laughs> if they do hit it, uh, he gets to do it again. It's kind of like hitting a power line with a golf <laughs> shot. You get to do it again. First down, Pittsburgh. Tony Dorsett, oh. number 20. Oh. They run him down. Ben Zambezi and Bobby Thompson on the play for Georgia. Number 41, Thompson, 44, Zambezi. No room that time. Bulldogs all over the place. It'll be second down and ten. Thus far, Pittsburgh has really hurt uh, the Georgia team passing, and Georgia's done a pretty decent job shutting off the running game. There's the old city. Old out there. <laughs> Goes to the up man. Out of that eye formation again, the up man is Dorset. Moving him around pretty good. Different positions in the backfield. They did that in the Penn State game and very successfully, particularly in the second half. Game two, third down, eight coming. Taylor wide to the left. Gordon Jones to the right. Kavanaugh on the option. Runs away from one. No, not this time. For the kind of speed George's got. Jim Griffith was the man that forced him to reverse direction, and then Jeff Sanders ran him out of bounds. You can see the George's speed that time. Kavanaugh was trying to outrun, go away against the grain, and there were a lot of bulldogs that recovered, and he never had a chance. Larry Swider is the deep man uh, in the punt formation for Pittsburgh, standing back on the one yard line. Fine punter. Got a little pressure, and it's a low kick. Mark Mitchell comes over. And a little safety cannot get away. We've got a penalty flag thrown. Might be a late hit. Might be a late hit. So while we get the definition, let me tell you that tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern Time, we premiere the Sunday edition of ABC's Wide World of Sports. Howard Cosell in a live interview with Muhammad Ali. The Vienna Ice Review. And you'll have the... World Series of Auto Racing featuring the International Race of Champions. 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central and Pacific over most of these ABC stations. ABC's Wide World of Sports Sunday edition. Big penalty against the Panthers.
Now Georgia has the ball in Pittsburgh land. I guess that's the first time in a ball game, isn't it, Jimmy Rips? I think so. At the 47, a fifth first down Bulldog. Off the throw. Goes over the middle. It's intercepted by Arnie Weatherington. Goff just kind of threw that ball. He had the same pass on that it worked successfully for Pittsburgh. Running the tight end right down the middle, but uh, Ray Goff just threw that ball a little low. Davis Ray was in the seam and looked to be open if yeah. he could have raised yeah. it up just a little bit. Weatherington made a great interception on it, but if Goff had put a little air under that ball, it could have been a completion. First turnover in the ball game. Pittsburgh gets it back. First down at their own 26-yard line. I, the only time that I saw the Georgia team this past season was against Florida. They were down 27-13 at halftime and came back and blew Florida over 41-27. So. Sure did. That was a great football game. Never know about them. Comes Kavanaugh. Whips it to the sidelines to Taylor. Willie gets Ooh. away. He's slippery. He ran right away from Johnny Henderson. Oh, he's a, he's, he really is a dangerous runner when he gets his hands on the ball. He can really fly, makes people miss. He's like a back out there. That's Arnie oh, Weatherington yeah. who intercepted the pass, taking some oxygen on the sidelines. 41-yard line, first down, Panthers. Well, we don't have to worry about the wind in here. That's one thing. Ball is given to Dorset. He's buried. Maybe short of the line of scrimmage. Ran right into Zambezi and Swopes. George is doing a great job against the running game. As I mentioned earlier, the passing game is what's hurt him. And they're staying in there as far as the running is concerned. Of course, when you load up against the run, you've got to give up something somewhere, yeah, don't you? Yeah, they're giving up a little bit, I think, with the secondary. But uh, you have to, to stop this Pittsburgh team. They're a well-balanced well, well -balanced ball club. Cavanaugh can throw the ball. And it was, as we've already seen, Willie Taylor and Gordon Jones can make people miss. There they go with a double flanker out there. This could be a passing down. Kavanaugh's gone four for eight and 105 yards so far. He whips it. He's got it. Look out. Look out. He's gone. Gordon Jones, number 24. Just like the play that worked to Walker. Except Jones came from the other side. And Again, showed you strength because we've seen time and again already these Pittsburgh receivers break tackle. Well, Keith, that time, uh, Kavanaugh came down the line to make it look like an option. The secondary, or I should say the linebackers, came up to support it, and then Kavanaugh delivered the ball to Jones. And there was nobody there except one man to try to stop it, and both of those wide receivers could fly. Right. Now I think we can define where Georgia's giving up something in the secondary because both late completions have been in the same area. Right. Here's Carson Long for the kick. Drilled it. Somebody got a souvenir and went through the screen. <laughs> Here's the score now. Watch the quickness and the strength. Well, watch Kevin Long come down the line, then throw the ball to Jones, and he just breaks the tackle and it's all over with. It goes all the way in. And again, we've got one thing about this Pittsburgh team, it's not a one-man club. Now here's Bill Krug. He's the rover, and he is he's literally blitzing on the play. He's in the offensive uh, backfield, and there's the hole. Right, but he's way away from the action. But Krug is a big play guy, I'll tell you that. He'll come up with something. Here's Jones, just comes right down the field, turns to the inside as Kavanaugh faked the run, caught the pass, shook off one tackler here, and of course, then he's headed for the goal line. And it's 14 to nothing ball game. That Johnny Henderson there had a chance, just it would have been a tough chance, but uh, he lost him, and it was a second score on the board. At 8.33 to play, 8 minutes and 33 seconds to play in the first half. 74 yards, they take it. Gene Washington will be the deep man as Gordon Jones is accepting congratulations on the sidelines as number 82 for Georgia. Showing some respect for Carson Long's leg, isn't he? He's standing yeah. back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Long can put him away. He's got it up in the air. Very high. Four. Bottles. Oh, oh, oh! Into the crowd. Oh, there's a flag. Long shoved him out. 
Looking like going to put another 15 on top of that, Keith. He almost peeled it out. And Carson Long was over there, and I believe it was Carson that hit him, shoved him. Pittsburgh probably complaining on that because when you're playing with the intensity that they're playing here today, well, that's what's going to happen. They hit him, I think, when he was out of bounds. Let's see Let's here see. now. There he is. He goes on out of bounds. Carson. Yeah. Well, well, right there, yes. He's, he's, he's way off the playing field there. Right. Strip call. So they add 15 to it, and Georgia has the ball up at near the 45 yard line. Take another look at it here. It's Carson Long. You see, he's about got to be three or four yards off the field, and he continues pushing and shoving, and of course, the call is proper. New quarterback Matt Robinson in for the Georgia Bulldogs, number 17. He's generally the passing quarterback. Whoa. Hands to Kevin McLean. And Pittsburgh realizing, and I'm sure instinctively remembering, that Robinson is the passer. Left him a little gap there, and McLee dances up the midfield. Well, we may see more of this draw screen technique because Matt Robinson's got a great arm to throw the football and uh, has had a good year. Of course, I was surprised that Goff put it up so often. Second down. Better part of five yards to go. McLee again. And he muscles to about the 47 before Randy Holloway. Big junior tackle from Sharon, Pennsylvania, makes the stop, number 70. In our opening game of the season, Randy Holloway had a great football game against the Fighting Irish. And he's played well all season. Big fella. 47. Might go for the big one here. I wonder whether or just the first down. It's third and short. Third and two. Oh, They've got, got the it. first down as yeah. McLee goes to the 44-yard line. You know, this McLee is uh, uh, quite a runner. He carried the ball 218 times for 1,058 yards. That's almost a five-yard average. And uh, if you get a thousand yard back, you got some kind of player. And he came from Pennsylvania. Yeah. To Georgia. Teammate of Chuck Muncie, I guess, a long time ago. Yep. McLee is eight for 35. He carries for 35 yards. He's doing all right. Georgia needs a touchdown. They trail 14 0 with 7 10 to go first half. Robinson down the line. Penalty flags down. Robinson turns it upfield. Hit hard inside the 35. He's. He's very close to a first down, but let's see about the penalty. Looks like the uh, the umpire threw the flag, and generally you get a holding penalty when you get the umpire throwing the flag. And he's lined up just behind the defensive lineman. Procedure call. Procedure? Yep, I think that's what he indicated. Be against the Bulldogs. Pittsburgh now hit two times with the flag for 30 yards, and Georgia three times for 15 yards, and we've had now just two occasions where we've had offsetting penalties. Yeah, just five yards. Somebody must have moved in the interior line in there that the umpire could see. <laughs> Tough break for him because he came out with good yardage. Makes it first down and 15 from the Pittsburgh 49 with Washington wide right and Davis wide left. Throw it. Matt Robinson throws it out short intended right. for McLee and number 68 was right over there for Pittsburgh coming out of the defensive tackle position Don Parrish and he was really in the way I'll tell you that was well defense by Pittsburgh they had everybody covered they had the, both the flanker and the tight end coming off the line of scrimmage the backside halfback flaring out they had three receivers to the side and Pittsburgh had pressure on the passer as well coverage on each receiver. TD on the sidelines. It is second down and 15 for Georgia. Robinson sets them now, and they're all tight. No wide people. Oh, here Reverse comes it to Davis. Steve Davis coming from his end position on a reverse gets it down to the Pittsburgh 45 yard line where Don Parrish makes the tackle. Tight end reverse. Steve Davis came Good around. Play. Looked like it was going to develop into something big. Good recovery by this Pittsburgh team. Come on, bring it up now. Bring it all down. See the time running in the second quarter of play with the Panthers leading 14 to nothing. Ball is at the 46 yard line. The Georgia band, the Pitt band, both performing at halftime, and featured performer will be Mr. Pete Duncan with his clarinet. 
Third down, 11 yards to go to Robinson. Pass over the middle. It is intercepted by James Kramer. Jimbo gets it. That's a second interception by a Panther linebacker. Boy, that was a great interception. And so with 5.59 to go in the first half, Pitt gets it back. First down at the 33. Another look at the interception. Now we're isolated on the receiver. Look, flying through the air comes Jimbo Kramer. Great interception. He launched himself, and he hung on to the ball. Generally, when a guy lays out like that, he might fumble the ball when he hits the surface, but he hung on to the ball. It was a great interception because Davis was open, and it was only the effort of Kramer, Kramer that uh, brought the interception about. And the Panthers have it first down at the 33-yard line, leading 14 to nothing. Kavanaugh's pass. Complete to Corbett for tight end. Jim Corbett, the senior from Erie, makes a leaping catch for another Pittsburgh first down, a very close to it. Here's Jim. Keith, I want to throw in a quick story about Jim Kramer, who just made that interception. This whole experience has got to be one of the best of his life. On December 17th, Kramer got married to his older brother's wife's little sister. I think I got that right. Both Kramer brothers are married to a pair of sisters. She also happens to be the niece of a good friend of ours, Roger Valdeseri, the sports information director at Notre Dame. Kramer went to Ohio State his first two years of school, had a very bad personality conflict with coach Woody Hayes of Ohio State, didn't think he was getting enough chance to play, transferred away from there to come to Pittsburgh, and now he's a second-team All-American linebacker, honeymooning here in New Orleans and enjoying it with that interception. And it's a first down for Pittsburgh on the completion to Jim Corbett. Kavanaugh, 6 out of 10 for 175 yards here in the first half. It goes to Walker, the fullback number 34, and he gets it out to the 48-yard line before the Bulldogs can plant him. That's four yards, maybe five. Looks like the Bulldogs are going to have to loosen up uh, with their linebackers because they've got them up in there tight. They're really vulnerable to the pass, and uh, of course, Kavanaugh's been hitting, so uh, they better give a little bit more on the ground rather than the explosive passing game that Pittsburgh has shown thus far. And we're playing inside the dome in New Orleans. It goes to Walker again. And he's across midfield of the Georgia 48-yard line. He's about a yard shy of the first down. And the crowd watching this 43rd Sugar Bowl, 76,117. That is a new football record at the Sugar Bowl. As Johnny Majors uh, took over a Pittsburgh team four years ago that had not had a winning season in 10 years. And continual improvement each year up until this undefeated team. And now they're ahead 14 to nothing in the Sugar Bowl Classic. John is headed for Knoxville and Tennessee. It's Walker again over the right side. On third down in a yard and a half, he gets the first down as he cracks the Georgia 45 to near the 44. Lawrence Kraft from Fort Rooker, Alabama, makes the stop. Georgia's doing exactly what I mentioned earlier here. They're dropping off their linebackers a little bit, loosening up to try to shut off that passing game, which is so explosive. But in the process, this Pittsburgh team is starting to pound out three and four yards. Uh, Pittsburgh is gone now, Era, for 239 yards to Georgia 68 in the first half. That's a lot of offense. Kavanaugh to Dorset. Oh, look at that move. Wow. Oh, boy. All the way to the 22-yard line. First down for Pittsburgh and a great run by Tony. Mark Mitchell brought him down 23 yards. The man standing right there to make the play for no gain. And he just absolutely puts a move on with his speed. And also his mobility runs right by him and comes upfield. This is a key series of downs, I think, for the Georgia Bulldogs. Oh, is it ever? You know, we, saw him, we saw him overcome a two-touchdown deficit in the uh, Florida game, but three touchdowns is going to be awful tough. Tony now with 56 yards on 15 carries. Kavanaugh down the line. He is caught from behind. There's a heck of a defensive play by Ronnie Swopes coming out of the interior line. Sure was. Great play. Saved some, he saved the ground gainer that time. I think it's key here for the Bulldogs. Uh, with 3.34 left now, if they can keep Pittsburgh out, I think they can be in this ball game. But if they yield a touchdown in this, oh, it's a 25-yard line on in, boy, it's going to be tough in the second half for them. Loss of two, second down, 12, just inside the 25 of Georgia. Kavanaugh pitches to Dorset. Penalty flags down as Tony gets out there, jukes a couple of times and loses two yards. There's just no way he was going to get away that time from Krug and Kraft. Kraft, he shadowed him right all the way. 
Dorset put on about 16 moves and Kraft put him right on with him. Of course, Kraft's quite a football player. Procedure call against Pittsburgh. Tomorrow at 2 Eastern time on ABC, the season premiere of the Superstars this week. Oh, you just, it's a whole lot of fun, I'll tell you that. You'll be watching Bob Cousy, Jimmy Taylor, Peter Snell, Jim Ryan, Floyd Little. A lot of the veterans, the men who made sports history in this country. So join us tomorrow at 2 Eastern time, 1 Central, and Pacific time over most of these ABC stations. Of course, the American sportsmen follow superstars, and then comes the Sunday edition of ABC's Wide World of Sports. 308 to go in the first half. We refused the penalty here, uh, took the down, I believe. Yep. Uh, Loss of two yeah. by Dorset, so the ball right. is back now at the 26 yard line, and it's third down. Third down, and they need 14 yards for the first down. Gordon Jones is wide right, <laughs> Willie Taylor wide left. Kavanaugh's pass intended for Taylor. He's got it down on the 14 yard line, maybe the 13. He's wrestled down by Johnny Henderson. Just short of the first down, I believe. It'll bring up fourth and about two. Take a look at Willie Taylor here, number 29. Wide receiver here. He drives up the field like he's going to go deep. Well covered. Plants his right foot, turns back, and what we call a comeback sideline. He comes back to the ball to make it very difficult for the defender. Catches the ball here. And, of course, he's tackled, and he's just short of the first down, I believe. Pittsburgh takes timeout. Both teams now with two timeouts remaining. They need about a yard. Pittsburgh's a hard team to hold out. They really are. I'll yard. tell you, they, you know, the one thing about this Pittsburgh ball club, everybody talks about Dorset, and of course, he's been a super great back, unquestionably, but they've got great flank receivers. They've got a great quarterback who can throw the football. We've got a lot of action going on the sideline here. Let's see if we can see what's going on, what they're going to call. Kavanaugh talking with the coaches. I just need a foot, Bill. Right tight, 20. Then we gotta have it, Matt. Right tight. Something. You need a little more than a foot. Do the yard. Well, we couldn't quite pick up exactly what they were going to do. Probably a tight formation on the right side. Something on the right side yeah. they were talking about. We got Walker on that side. Most of it's left that time. Got it. Oh, Walker. Yeah. yeah, they really moved. That right side really moved off the line of scrimmage. Joe Stone, Tom Brazosa, John Pelosi, Rich Cooper, the tight end. Went on a quick count, and they really came off the blocks. The old story of in the trenches, Keith. First down at the 11, 221 to go. Pittsburgh trying to get in for the third touchdown of the first half. Kavanaugh has had a super first half. Woo. Matt delivers it to two. Oh, look out, he's got the corner. Touchdown, Dorset. Oh. Did he turn on the Jets, or did he turn on the Jets? Bob Hutton threw a big block. Or was it Walker? Elliot Walker, Walker threw the big block to get him around. Did he accelerate when he got that ball? Carson Long for the extra point at 2:02 to go in the first half. He drilled it. And the Pittsburgh Panthers, who want to be number one, lead the Georgia Bulldogs by a score of 21 to nothing. And they are putting it up right here in the Sugar Bowl. Here's the option play by Kavanaugh, just a true option with a lead blocker. He comes down the line, flips the ball out, gets a great block there by Walker, and look at the speed and the acceleration by this Dorset. He just literally runs by, I believe it's Larry. You're looking down at the old Sugar Bowl. That is Tulane Stadium. It's an outdoor stadium. Just 1974, Nebraska defeated Florida in the last Sugar Bowl game played there. Located literally in the heart of 
the city of New Orleans and then you come on over toward the river and there is the Superdome where we are today for the 43rd annual Sugar Bowl game where the Pittsburgh Panthers top ranked in the country are leading the Georgia Bulldogs by a score of 21 to nothing and Carson Long now approaching to kick off Pittsburgh with 202 to go he puts it way up in the air to Gene Washington at about the six penalty flag as Washington comes to the 28. I don't know if that's a flag or if it's a pad. It's a pad. A shoe. Somebody's shoe. Mm -hmm. Looked like a flag for a minute, didn't it? I see those foreign objects on the field, and especially if on a kickoff return, mistakes can be made so easily. At the 28-yard line of Georgia, Bulldogs down 21. Zip have the ball. Matt Robinson, the quarterback. And Gene Washington coming. Georgia quarterbacks have been intercepted twice so far in the game, both times by Pittsburgh linebackers. Robinson back to throw. He throws, and Washington had cut on the pattern back inside, and there was nobody near the football. No coordination on the pass route. I guess uh, Robinson thought, uh, who was that breaking down? Was that Steve Davis? Uh, no, that was Gene Washington. Yeah. He took the fly pattern right up the field, and I guess Robinson thought he was going to run an out pattern to the sideline. Waste it down. <laughs> oh, they're loving it. Right now, they're loving it. Second down. Ten yards to go for the Bulldogs. Robinson will put it up again. Throw short. Incomplete. The pass intended for Al Pollard, the fullback, coming out of the backfield. At halftime, Chevrolet Motor Division will present Coach of the Year Award. Bill Fleming will have that spe special feature for you. Uh, participating, Mr. Bob Cook, who is the general sales manager of Chevrolet. Coach of the year at all three divisions and a great show with Pete Fountain, the Georgia Band, and the Pitt Band. So settle down and enjoy yourself. Try to remember all the fun of last night. Third down and ten. Robinson getting some heat. Passes away. The pass is complete to Steve Davis on a rolling, tumbling catch upfield at the 47-yard line. Don Parrish and Randy Holloway were the two men trying to take Robinson's arm off. There's Steve Davis coming from the far side of the field. Robinson's forced out of the pocket. He just crosses over the middle, gets in between linebackers there. You see Wetherington 59 coming over, makes a great catch. The ball is low, but he makes a super catch. And it's first down for Georgia at the 47-yard line. Matt Robinson... Gets his pass off, and it's incomplete. And Georgia folks are screaming for interference as he was cut down by Bob Jury, number 31. Hey, that was close. The ball was right in the neighborhood, so he got well, away with it. Let's see if he... If, I don't know whether he stumbled and fell here or whether well, he actually Jury. tried to block him here. What? Jury cut yeah, him down. That's, well, he, he, he blocked the man when the ball was in the air. That's interference. The ball was going right yeah. over the top of him, though, when they made the hit. Right there. Contact is made. You can see the ball coming into your picture right there. Contact is made. And you have an interference that was not called. Second down, ten. Robinson's pass blocked. Blocked by Don Parrish, number 68. This Pittsburgh team really came to play, and I guess, uh, as Jim Lampley pointed out earlier, Keith, it didn't make any difference what kind of training program they had. I guess they were ready to play when they came to the field here. Well, the scoreboard would reflect it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so do the numbers in the scorebook. Well, you got to give that passing game the real credit. Third down, 10. Robinson's pass. Oh. oh. Going away to the sidelines intended for Washington. There's Lee Majors, the $6 million man on the pit sideline wearing a pit hat. Well, he's got a $6 million team right now with a lead of 21 to nothing. And it is fourth down. Bucky Diltz in the punt for the Bulldogs. And Pittsburgh has no one deep. And Georgia kicks it. Bucky hangs it up, get a good flag. roll. That's a great kick. There's a penalty flag on the field. The ball dribbles out of bounds at the four-yard line. Ball kicked out on about the four. Now here's Jim. 
just as Florida did in the game for the Southeastern Conference Championship. Pittsburgh has exploded on Georgia in the first half. But now Coach John Majors is going to have to tell his team about Georgia in the second half. One of the most remarkable statistics we've seen on a team this year. The Bulldogs had given up a total of 30 points in the second half all year. Just six, two field goals in the third quarter. 14 of the points they gave up in the fourth quarter all year came against Cincinnati in a game that was already out of reach. I asked both coaches why they thought Georgia was so strong in the second half defensively. Coach Vince Dooley said it was partially related to what he calls the intelligent fanaticism of his defensive coordinator, Irk Russell. His teams are very intense, very well-drilled and well-schooled, but they play extremely emotional football and get stronger as the game goes on. They ought to be back in this game in the second half based on their record. He P penalty goes against Pittsburgh, giving Georgia first down at the fifth 39 pass to Gene Washington. Thrown by Robinson is really drilled to Gene, and he actually didn't have much of a chance to do anything with it. Well, Keith, on that punt, James Wilson, the left halfback, I think uh, had an infraction as Georgia was going down to cover the ball, and while the ball was in the air, it's still in the possession of Georgia, so that the penalty was assessed to uh, Pittsburgh, and they maintain possession. And, of course, Georgia's going to have to hang on to the ball. Only one minute left in the first half. One minute at the fifth 39, second down 10. Robinson goes deep for Washington. It's intercepted at the 10 yard line. It is Bob Jury and Leroy Felder there together. I think Jury is the man that got the ball. If so, it would be his 10th. Let's see which one came up with it. Both of them there. Well, they both were there. Washington drives up the field, puts a fake to the inside, goes back to the flag to the outside. Looks like he's got him beat, but there's yes, sure. both defenders there. Is that Felder there? And, and jury. also Jury. Who gets it? Uh, still here. <laughs> I still don't. They're I'm both not, wrapped around it. I'll tell you, they've got it, Bill. <laughs> Look, all right. It's they Felder. They both have it. Felder. I think they both got it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, Pittsburgh's got the ball just outside the 10-yard line. And they'll just run the clock out now as they get it in motion. Georgia with two timeouts may choose here to spend them trying to save the time but the clock is still running with 40 seconds to go in the first half. I think uh, of course Pittsburgh this is a dangerous area when you're fooling around with the ball back inside your own 10 yard line any kind of error of course could give a quick six seven points to your opponent so you want to play conservative conservative down here and that's exactly what Pittsburgh is doing and it's exactly what I would do if I was coaching. Clock running at 20 seconds to go now as Kavanaugh will probably take the snap and just sit down with it. <laughs> Whistle stops it now. Looks like Georgia may spend a timeout. They have two timeouts remaining. And they do call time. They have, so one, they have left one more. Yeah. With only 15 ticks remaining on the clock to halftime, 21 0 Pittsburgh. Tomorrow, the 1977 premieres of three great series beginning with the superstars and all the excitement of the men's first qualifying round. Followed by the American sportsman as Candace Bergen learns the skills of a high-speed auto racer. And Peter Benchley leads a movie crew to a shark-beating frenzy in Australia. Then the Sunday edition of ABC's Wide World of Sports debuts, featuring a live interview by Howard Cosell with Muhammad Ali on his boxing future. The spectacular Vienna Ice Review and action in the World Series of Auto Racing, tomorrow on ABC. Georgia with one remaining timeout. Killing the clock. I'm a little surprised they didn't spend it sooner. Yeah, but I'm. I'm too, Keith. They they could call timeout right after this third down play and force a punting situation on fourth down, which they probably will do. The ball is back at the seven. <laughs> and the ball off this time to Elliott Walker, and now Georgia spends the timeout. And they will force Pittsburgh to kick it away with 11 seconds to go. 11 seconds. Leroy Felder, incidentally, was given official credit for that pass interception. The Goodyear blimp is sailing over the city of New Orleans, Louisiana, with Chuck LeBeau as the captain, Bill Sullivan, our cameraman, and Al Epstein, the video, providing that picture of this great old city. And it has been festive this week. <laughs> <laughs> Like Mardi Gras, they tell me. Sugar Bowl Committee does an outstanding job in making everybody comfortable. And it is quite a chore. 
11 seconds now as Swider is in the end zone. Lara will punt out of the end zone. Coming after it. Gets it away. Good one. Mitchell. Pin down at the Pittsburgh 41 with one tick on the clock remaining. 42 yard punt and a seven yard return. Looks like Georgia will get one play. Yeah, get one. They'll probably throw it down in the end zone. Anything can happen. 76,117 here in the Superdome watching the Louisiana Superdome. Might have saved themselves a little bit more time. I didn't realize that they had enough timeouts to uh, kill the clock the way they did. But uh, they are able to put one ball up in the air. And, you know, who knows, even though you're playing back for a long pass, the ball juggles around and sometimes the offense comes up with it. I think that's what we'll see here, Keith. Davis and Washington both wide right. Robinson straight back. For Washington. Intercepted in the end zone by Jury. There's number 10 for Bob for 1976 for the 76 season. And the first half is over with Pittsburgh leading 21 to nothing. And here's Jim. Not a bad little half, coach. I'm sure you're happy. Well, I'm never happy till the game's over and we win, Jim. Uh, yes, our football team's played very aggressive football, and both teams are playing with a lot of emotion. I'm very pleased. Our passing game, I think, really helped us open up the game, plus our defense is doing a great job. I wonder if it's occurred to you this is the last time you go into the locker room with these guys. It has, but I tell you what, I haven't tried to dwell on it because this football team has more to work for than John Majors. They're a great group of young men, and we've got another half to play. Okay. Thanks very much for spending time with us, and good luck in the second half. Coach John Majors of Pittsburgh. Halftime, Pitt 21 and Georgia nothing, and we'll be back to the Superdome right after this. Well, uh, hold on a second. Keep, keep that point. We're back at halftime in the Superdome. University of Pittsburgh Panthers going for a national championship right now on top of Georgia, 21 to nothing. They could not possibly have played a more impressive or explosive first half. First half statistics, and obviously the most interesting one there and the one that seems to reflect most clearly what's happened in the first half, the turnovers. Four times Georgia Bulldogs have turned it over to Pittsburgh. As a result of that, the Panthers had the ball more than 17 minutes in the first half and have dominated the game offensively. Scoring plays, Matt Cavanaugh led off the scoring for Pittsburgh with his run in between the pass to Gordon Jones. And of course, the final score was the run by Tony Dorsett, the Hawk, who's just getting loosened up toward the end of the first half. And the last touchdown by Tony Dorsett. And now let's listen to the University of Pittsburgh marching band, playing today with the accompaniment of one of the most exciting and best-known young jazz and rock musicians in the United States, Chuck Mangione. The Pittsburgh marching band has 170 members under the directorship of Donald E. Howard. defensive secondary. Leroy Felder had a pass interception in the first half and Bob Jury was the leading interceptor with a total of nine during the regular season. Second down, call it eight yards to go for Georgia from the 27. Ball again goes to Al Collar and he's up to the 29-yard line and that's all there is for it. So Georgia's going to be looking at third down and about six yards to go. Looks like they're trying to be patient. They've run two plays straight into the line. They picked up about five yards. Oh, there's uh, Eck Russell, huh? Yep. I imagine Eric did some talking at halftime. <laughs> yeah, I'll guarantee. Third down and six. Pittsburgh with a seven-man front. 
Shot coming down on the auction, tries to turn it inside, and he's got no place to go as Romano came out of the line position, came across to make the tackle. But Romano got over there awful quick. Playing the nose man, number 91, you see him shed the block, pursue along the line of scrimmage, and get Goff. Looked like Goff might be able to pick up the first down and make the tackle for no gain. Bucky Dills averaging 47 yards on four punts. Hits another towering shot. The fair catch goal by Willie Taylor. On the ball, five seconds again. The ball is back at the Pittsburgh 24. That's a 45-yard punt by Dills. Well, he's really booming that ball. Now here's the Panther offense. For their first possession of the second half, Gordon Jones, the wide man, Hanhauser, Carroll, Pelosi, Rososa, Messick, and Corbett. Big guys up front with Kavanaugh, Dorsett, Walker, and Taylor in the backfield. First possession of the second half for Pittsburgh leading 21 nothing. Bumbo Walker had the ball and he lost it apparently, but Georgia begging the case. Now the official says yes. Launch pass. Number 92. That's the kind of breaks Georgia's going to need to get back into this football game. Let's see what they can do with it from the 26 yard line. Bulldogs get the ball at the Pittsburgh 26 yard line as Lawrence Kraft came up for the ball. It was handled by Walker, and I'm not sure that Elliott ever really did get a hold of it. Well, it's hard to tell whether or not he had full possession of the ball. He lost it early. So here's a big opportunity for the Bulldogs. Great job. Down as Goff goes to the Pittsburgh 19. What does it mean when it comes from that deep man? I don't know. He came clear from the, the back judge. He came clear from the left corner. That's no I don't know what he saw here. Let's take a look. Face mask. Oh, they'll pack some more on to it. And Georgia now with a big, big opportunity to start the third quarter of play. Great opportunity for him to get back into this football game. We've seen him do it before. Wally Tarashinsky, Ulysses Norris. Tarashinsky's out and Norris is in with Mark Todd. He had a tie, double tight end alignment now for the Bulldogs. They keep Gene Washington in, sends him wide as a flanker. From the nine, Kevin McLean. Not much. Uh, they shut him off well there. That was a good goal line defense. And uh, Pittsburgh has gone, has gone at this stage in the nine yard line of a man to man coverage, single coverage. So maybe uh, Steve Davis or Gene Washington can break loose down here. They may have to throw it to get him to the end zone. Comment there on the Georgia passing for the season. Second down from the nine. Off to Washington, can't find him, and he overthrows Pollard. Ray Goff had Pollard in an attacking posture that time, as he could have cut and gone for the corner, but he couldn't get the ball to it. Well, Pollard came out as the third receiver, flooding the side. He had little leverage there, but he didn't get the ball to it. And so it is third down from the nine. Davis coming back in now as they bring out one of those tight ends. It is Hodge coming out. And Steve Davis is back in. Gene Washington put a cute little move on the Pittsburgh cornerback that time as he started right and literally spun around and curled back inside. How about the end of the round here, maybe? Third down from the nine. There it is. Davis pitches it out to the three. Bumble. But they caught him down at the seven. You very seldom will see better defensive play than that. Really was well defensed. It was also well executed. You take a uh, another look at it. He fakes the ball into the line, gives the ball to the end coming coming around. He pitches it on out. But there's about four or five Pittsburgh players over here, ready to make the play. Georgia will go for three. Alan Levitt was in for the extra point try out of Matt Robinson's hold. It is up. And from just inside the 25-yard line, it is good. 
With 11 minutes and 30 seconds to play in the third quarter, Georgia gets on the board. It leads it 21 to 3. The Georgia Bulldogs get three points out of the break when they desperately needed seven. And now they'll kick it off. Levitt will kick it away. Larry Sims and Willie Taylor deep for Pittsburgh. It's Sims in the end zone. Going to come out with it from four yards. Gets for the 15, 16, and that's it. You know, the uh, Pittsburgh team being able to hold and yielding only a field goal uh, probably helped a tremendous momentum shift that could have occurred, although there was good coverage by Georgia Bulldogs here, and they're going to force Pittsburgh to go the long way, 85 yards here. Just outside the 15-yard line for the Panthers. They have been dominant. The three-quarter statistics really tell you that. They had 283 yards in the first half to only 78 for Georgia. As Matt Cavanaugh hands the ball to Tony Dorsett. And he's out to the 20 and across to the 21. Jeff Sanders and Dickie Clark. The tackle, 99-87. Plenty of Bulldogs in on him. Dorset has always uh, been able to manage to break a long one in the second half. He's a strong runner, a lot like Ricky Bell. They get stronger the more carries that they have. Taylor and Jones both come left. Second down, five. Seven off it. Gets a first down out to the 26, 27 yard line with Jim Griffith and Bobby Thompson making the stop for Georgia. I think we've got a. Was that. Uh, Looked like Elliot Walker that made a great block on the end there. He is better than an average blocking back in that backfield. I'll tell you that. He really is. I'll tell you. Of course, there's the stats there. Uh, 188 yards passing, 7 for 11 for Kavanaugh. And therein lies the story of the difference between the score. Also, four turnovers for Georgia to now just one for Pittsburgh. First down. On the 26, it's Dawson. Tony gets two to the 28 before Griffith, Zambezi, and company wrestle him down. It's great been alternating, alternating their offensive formation more than I have seen in the previous games. They used an unbalanced line that time with the eye. They've used the pro set. They've used the beer look. They've used a lot of different looks in there. Uh, double flankers to a side. Here they come out with a pro eye, it looks like. On second down and eight for Pittsburgh from the 28. Dorsett. Play is dead back at the 38-yard line, and it should be another first down. It's good blocking at the point of attack that time by the Pittsburgh offensive line. Here's a uh, replay on Zambisi. He's blocked well. Driven off the line of scrimmage, he sheds the block and still gets in and makes the play. Exactly on the 38-yard line. First down, Panthers. They're controlling the ball game, in fact, dominating the ball game. Leading 21 to 3. Elliot Walker over the right side to about the 42-yard line. Bill Krug, 42, first Bulldog to get to him. One time Pittsburgh comes out and runs just a plain eye, gives the ball to the fullback or the tailback. Next time they come out and run the beer. Next time they come out and run the two option. They're keeping the Georgia team pretty well off balance, and the versatility of the team is being well uh, visualized here. At the 42. Second down, six. Dorset. There it is. First down of Pittsburgh at the Georgia 43-yard line is Mark Mitchell late the tackle. Great blocking on the right side of the line by Corbett with a message for Zosa. They really cleaned it out. And remember at 4.30 Eastern time tomorrow, the premiere of the Sunday edition of ABC's Wide World of Sports, Howard Cosell interviewing Muhammad Ali live at the Vienna Ice Review, the first race of the World Series of Auto Racing featuring the top drivers, the international classes, We've got fun for you tomorrow on ABC's Wide World of Sports at 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central and Pacific, over most of these ABC stations. Matt Cavanaugh, the quarterback. He had no chance for the option. He turned went back the other way. There were two Georgia players, and 
He managed to avoid one of them and got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe picked up a yard or two. He got three. He got three on it, like how he did. Looked like they had him all locked up. There's Parrish and Wilson, the right side of the Georgia offensive line. Yeah, a couple of all Americans, too. Yeah. Really good ones. Second down, short seven. Goes to Bob Hutton, 44, the fullback, one yard. Zambezi put a real stick on that time. He came flying in and put a real hit on him. We're going to replay on it right here. Watch 44. I can step right inside here, right between the scenes, put on a super tackle on Bob Hutton, number 44. Third and five. Georgia 38. Kavanaugh's pass for Corbett. Incomplete. They had a blitz on from the backside. Old Bill Krug, number 42, who makes a lot of things happen. Putting pressure on. 7-12 to go in the third quarter to punt. Well, if anything, they're going to yield uh, field position to the Bulldogs. Particularly if the Schweider just kind of bumps it down here, about to roll around inside that tent. He's going for the side. Oh, he shanked it. He shanked it. Not much on that one. The line of scrimmage was the 38. I think that one went out just about the 37. That might be a one yard punt. I'll tell you, the time you got to be very careful on the right uh, hash mark. Preceding Wide World of Sports at 2 o'clock is the opening segment of Superstars for this year, and at 3.30, a very interesting American sportsman dealing with sharks. Thursday night here, Tony Dorsett got one of the great opportunities any young man can get. Tony's a communications major at the University of Pittsburgh. He's invited to do the sports segment on the air, live television at one of the local stations here in New Orleans. Said it scared him to death. He even fluffed his first line, but then read it fairly smoothly. Tony is somebody who's progressed so far in four years, it's almost unbelievable. He was very shy as a freshman. He Larry Swider got two yards on the punt. George has fallen at the 36 yard line. Goff turns it upfield. And Rakoff runs for a first down from the 36 to about the 48 yard line, and he was really belted. Looked like uh, he actually was faking the pass and really deliberately trying to run the football. He cleaned it out. He got outside the contain and picked up the first down. Looked good money. In case you're interested about trivia, the shortest kick in Sugar Bowl uh, history was a minus two yards. A gentleman named Horn, <laughs> Clemson. 48-yard line, and Goff is gone. Matt Robinson in. Ray was shaken up on the play. And off goes to Kevin McLean, and he gets a yard. As the defensive right side of the Pittsburgh line led by Randy Holloway, and then Paris joined the crush. They throw him back. Randy Holloway got a lot of penetration, and uh, McLean had no chance. Who was that Pollard? Well, that was McLean. Second down nine for Georgia, just short of midfield. Robinson deck behind the line of scrimmage by Al Romano, the middle guard who fired and got through. That's the second time in a row that the defense, uh, the Pittsburgh defense has gotten tremendous penetration, and uh, Georgia cannot operate along the line of scrimmage without controlling it or having difficulty with it. Don Parrish. Down on the field, number 68, Pittsburgh tackle. Lose him, you lose a lot. Looks like it might be a knee or an ankle. So we'll have a timeout here for Pittsburgh while they attend to Don Parrish and Dan Zelahay will come in. Sophomore, number 79, replacing him with 5.56 to go in the third quarter of play and Pittsburgh leading Georgia 21 to three. We'll be right back. Inside the Louisiana Superdome with Pittsburgh leading Georgia 21 to 3. And Don Parrish has been helped off the field. It looks like a knee. Zelahy replaces him for the Georgia Bulldogs. It is third down and 10 from their own 49. They need a big play. They need some points. Matt Robinson, the quarterback, right now for shaken up. Robinson to drop and throw. To the sideline, throws a knuckleball, and is almost intercepted. Very poor pass. Ball slipped out of his hand. Cecil Johnson, Randy Holloway were involved in it, and they batted it around enough that it almost resulted in an interception. Really didn't have much time. The uh, Pittsburgh uh, defensive line was putting a lot of pressure on him. He didn't have much time to get rid of it. 
549 to go in the third quarter. Bucky Dilts to punt on fourth down. Beauty. Oh, Howard's are shot. Taylor Cole falls down at the six yard line. So Pittsburgh goes to work from the six, leading 21 to three. On January 16th, we begin here on ABC and most of these ABC stations, the United States Boxing Championship. We're established national title holders, national title holders in all categories. So watch for that starting on January 16th, right here over most of these ABC stations. Pittsburgh comes up with Elliot Walker, Tony Dorsett set up in the eye with Kavanaugh, the quarterback. It's Walker from the six to about the 12. Dambisi Griffith linebackers making the stop and a very positive offensive surge by the Pittsburgh line. I'll tell you, the, the Pittsburgh people in the trenches have been outstanding today, Aaron. On both offense and defense, I think Georgia would like very much to get a turnover here. He help him to get back into this football game. Bob Hutton checks in at fullback, replacing Elliot Walker, 44 instead of 34. And Hutton's got the ball. And Hutton hammers it to just about the 15. That'll leave him maybe a yard and a half short of the first down as Jeff Sanders makes the stop for Georgia. Georgia would like to hold here and force a punt, try to get some kind of field position. But this Pittsburgh ball club has failed very few times in this game on critical situations like this. Jones wide right, Taylor comes up. They give the ball to Tony Dorsett, trying for the first down, and he's close. No, it looks like he might. Well, he's close. They'll measure. Tomorrow afternoon, ABC Sports kicks off the new year with the return of three great sports series, beginning at two Eastern Time season premiere of the Superstars, featuring the veterans at 3.30 Eastern Time, another season premiere, the American Sportsman. You'll see a shark-beating frenzy in Australia. See Candace Bergen learn to drive a high-performance racing car. At 4.30 Eastern Time, ABC's Wide World of Sports in the season's first Sunday edition brings you a live interview with Muhammad Ali. A sensational Vienna Ice Review and race number one of the World Series of Automobile Racing featuring the leading drivers in every class. That's three exciting season premieres beginning tomorrow at 2 Eastern Time, 1 Central and Pacific over most of these ABC stations. In his first down, Pittsburgh, Tony Dorsett has 100 yards on 22 carries and he's gone again. Remember that earlier screen that they threw that they had set up to Dorset drop? 
Got third and long here. Billy Woods, 37, in the Georgia secondary now. As Kavanaugh drops and the screen. Dorsen. Bill Crud makes the tackle. Sam Beasy was back there and helped out on the play, and so was Dickie Clark. They tried to screen it off to the left side here. They didn't get the uh, wall set up. Penetration by the in the wall. And of course, Carson Long's going to have to try for a field goal here. He missed just barely at 54 yards. Now he's going for 42 yards. He's got plenty of leg. Two minutes to play, third quarter. its lead back to 21 points with a minute and 50 seconds to go in the third quarter. The score now is 24 to 3 Panthers. Here's Jim. Keith, when Pittsburgh goes back on defense, the Panthers will be without one of the key operatives in that great front line. Don Harris, defensive tackle, has apparently badly sprained ankle. He'll be out at least for the next couple of series and probably will not play again today. He's on the bench with the ice on it. That breaks up the Paris Holloway Romano front wall that posed such difficulty for Georgia. Don Paris sits out. Well, I'm glad to hear it's something serious, though, not a me. As we look down from the Goodyear Glimp, moving up over the city of New Orleans. Very cool day out there, but no river is passing. Chuck LeBeau, the pilot, Billy Sullivan, the cameraman, Al Epstein up there handling the video. And now we come back down toward the Superdome, the Louisiana Superdome. And inside we come for Jeff Tyburn, dropping deep as Carson Long prepares to kick off for Pittsburgh. 24 to 3, Panthers lead. This hit high and hit to the right and goes out of bounds. And for the second time here in the second half, Long will have to kick it from the 35. It's amazing for a guy that's uh, kicked, I think, 17 field goals in 25 attempts, which is a very significant uh, percentage. He's hit two of them out of bounds on kickoffs where he's got plenty of time to bump it. He holds a bundle of records, all the records at Pittsburgh for kicking. Well, let's see now. He's 45 for 45 in extra points. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not bad. And 17 for 25 in field goals. And, of course, uh, that is an outstanding record. He missed that 54-yarder earlier and hit the 42-yarder. So his career list, though, look at that. 43 wow. field goals in his career, Pitt. Second. All right. Let's see what we can do from the 35-yard line as Pyburn now comes up a little bit, hoping to get a little room with it. It's a very high kick. Jeff takes it at the 7. Uh oh they're trying to catch it here. Oh! Well, he tried to throw it back across the field to Willie McClendon, and uh, Pittsburgh's coverage was good enough, and the kick was high enough that they were already down to flutter up the play, and he threw the ball out of bounds. Actually, he had a little room to run to the right side yeah. if he kept going. Right. <laughs> well, they were trying to throw the ball across, trying to get all the Pittsburgh uh, defenders covering the kickoff to one side of the field, then throw it back and run down the left sideline, but it was an incomplete lateral. So here's Georgia in a bit of a hole as the ball is marked at the 12-yard line. They're down by 21 points with 1.43 to go in the third quarter. And Ray Goff back in at quarterback, coming out on an option. Oh, I tell you, you see that number 80, Ed Willimowski, hand by his way. He just kept stringing that play out. And there was no way that they could seem to get enough on him to get him out of the way. Well, they're trying to throw, and uh, I should say the pass that he's rolling out into, they've got a, a coverage man in the left flat, a man in the soft spot or on the hash mark side, and he's backed up by another man. And I'll tell you, it's awful tough to throw into that. This is good coverage on the part of uh, Pittsburgh. Second down, eight. And two yards. Goff keeps it. Puts his head down and lunges to very close to the 20 yard line. He 
inside the Louisiana Superdome. There's everything in the world inside of this thing that would add to the comfort of people coming here to watch the sports event, including luxury boxes where you can relax and enjoy yourself. And they're tucked back under the seating area, so you can't visually see them from where we're located. And we have 76,117 people in it watching. Third down, and they need four. Goff's got it as he gets out to the 27-yard line. Awful tough to run into that coverage that uh, Pittsburgh's giving them. We've got too many folks out there. Clock stops as they move the chains with 18 seconds remaining to play in the third quarter. First down Bulldogs at their own 27-yard line. Now the clock starts going as they set the chains down. as he gets it up to the 46-yard line. First down, third quarter is over. We'll be back after a word about an upcoming show on ABC and a message from you. The Pittsburgh Panthers, top ranked in the nation, just 15 minutes away from locking up a national championship. You go back to the days of Jock Sutherland, I guess 1937. Pittsburgh was 9-0-1 the last time the Panthers claimed the national championship. This would be the first time ever that a Pittsburgh team has gone through a season fully unblemished over a 12-game schedule. If they can control the Georgia Bulldogs the way they have through three quarters, then they will have it in hand. Here's Ray Goff on first down, pitching the ball out to Kevin McClee, and he turns it across midfield to the Pittsburgh 48-yard line. You know, Keith, uh, the thing that makes it all the more dramatic is the fact that Pittsburgh did not have a winning season in a decade, and Johnny Majors turned them around and, of course, uh, improved the record each year. Here he is with uh, 14 minutes and 39 seconds from a national championship team. And it's second down and four as you see the third quarter stats. Well, at uh, 403 yards to 145 is the dominant Panther statistic, I think, in this game. Break off, hands the ball off inside. The try for the first down by the fullback, Al Pollard. He's across the 45, inside the 44. Looks like Al might have made the first down. Did. The ability to Pittsburgh to pass in this game and the inadequacy thus far of Georgia in the passing department, they've only had 18 yards passing, while Pittsburgh has had 183. It's been very important. Sideline, McLean. McLean stepped out of bounds at the 30. Stepped out of bounds back at the 30. He actually ran to about the 12. Jeff Delaney and uh, Al Kesley defensively for Pittsburgh. So McLean almost got loose. That's what I thought he had. I didn't realize that he had stepped out of bounds. There was an official down there. I kept looking at him, and I didn't notice that he had stepped out of bounds on the sideline here. Set for the flanker and the split end, away from one another, and the double set. McLean hit hard as he gets to the 27 by Al Chesley, 55, a linebacker. Tried a little draw play, picked up uh, what, about three or four yards on it. Pittsburgh deployed to protect the pass. McLean, 13 carries and 47 yards now. It'll be second down, six. Bob still got it. I have to give it to Pollard. The ball is loose. It looks like Felder knocked it down. Number 37. Yeah, I'm still waiting. Pittsburgh signaling their ball, but I haven't seen a striped shirt show me that yet. Looks like Felder reached in with his right arm and batted the ball down as Goff was trying to deal it. And I think Felder came up with the ball, didn't he? All right. 
Ball is marked down after 27. 12.54 to go. From the preceding play out of the end zone, here's what happened. Watch Felder make a great play for Pittsburgh. Everybody Felder is blocked, gets up, reaches out with his right arm right here, knocks the ball down on the option, and Pollard would have gotten some positive yardage on the sideline. Great defensive play by Leroy Felder. Come on, Dave, come on! Must be four or five hundred people on each sideline. It's a little bit difficult to see unless you look at it from the end zone. It's Tony Dorset across the 30 to the 31. He gets the better part of four yards before Ronnie Swope brings him down. From up here, the acceleration that Dorset has is very visible. The difference between other backs carrying the ball, he just accelerates so rapidly. Twelve and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Kavanaugh goes to the sideline. Pass is complete to Willie Taylor. That time Taylor couldn't get away from the pursuit of the Bulldogs, so they did pick up about five yards on the play. Just a little short of the first down, maybe a yard and a half. One thing about those sideline routes, those uh, Pittsburgh receivers, they'll, instead of going out of bounds, they'll turn back to the inside and try to go for yardage. Taylor's four for 73. That's a pretty good day. Third down and one. Cavanaugh gets the one and some more. Four yard line before Billy Woods makes the tackle. So the Pittsburgh Panthers are controlling the football game with 11 and a half minutes to play. Here's Jim. Ever since this fight earlier this fall with Ken Dorsey, a lot of people have been wondering precisely what is going to happen in the future of Muhammad Ali, what his health is like, what his fighting future is, who he would choose to fight in his next bout. Tomorrow afternoon on Wide World of Sports, Howard Cosell live with Muhammad Ali. We'll discuss all of those things. The show also has the Vienna Ice Review and International Race of Champions. Tomorrow at 5 on Wide World. Keith? Dorset swept the ball. He's closing in on 200. Billy Woods and Bill Crook make the tackle for Georgia. Well, I'd hate to chase him all afternoon, I'll tell you. This Kavanaugh. Just on the eye backfield, slashing off tackle. Dorsett got pretty good blocking. Leans to the outside. You can see the speed that he has as he runs away from tackling. His ability to run through tackling. First down, Pittsburgh. Got the Georgia 34. Hutton is in with Walker. Dorsett is out right now. Kavanaugh gives to Walker. He gets a couple of yards. The Sugar Bowl running record, 199 yards, set in 1944 by Eddie Prokop, tailback for Georgia Tech. Techers beat Tulsa 20 to 18. 26 carries now for 189 yards for Tony. You'll see him next Saturday from the Hula Bowl in Honolulu, Aloha Stadium, right here over most of these ABC stations. Ricky Bell's going to be there, too? Yep. Kevin on the throw, going deep. Uh oh, oh, it's oh, complete. Just batted away from Willie Taylor by Billy Wood. Wood 6'2", 188. He replaced Johnny Henderson a few moments ago in the secondary for Georgia. Johnny Henderson at six feet might not have been able to break up that play. Oh, he made a great play. He reaches out with his left arm just to save it. You see here, Billy Woods. Chasing up the field. I watch him with his left arm. Just he's beaten by about two yards. And he reaches out with his left arm here and just deflects the ball enough. And Willie Taylor thought he had six. Instead, it's third and eight from the Georgia 32. Through from the back side. Pushed off the play and passes away and thrown too high, intended for Gordon Jones. Bill Cruz was uh, flipping from the back side. And he, he, he's all over the field. And that brings Carson Long into the ball game. Ten minutes and 26 seconds to play at the Sugar Bowl, and Pittsburgh leading Georgia 24 to 3, trying to lock up a national collegiate championship. It'll be a 49-yard field goal. He's hit a 42-yarder. He's missed a 54-yarder, just barely. This one from 49. 
Kisner. Just off to the right. And so with 10 minutes and 21 seconds to play in the ball game, Georgia gets another chance, trailing 24 to 3. With 189 yards in this ball game, Georgia has as a team 139 yards total. Right after the superstars tomorrow, don't forget American sportsmen. Shark beating in Australia and Candace Bergen learning to drive a high powered race car. Following superstars at 3.30 Eastern time. All right, here's Georgia at the 20 yard line. Washington could not hold it. Steve Davis threw it. That's a play that beat Florida a year ago when they used that tight end to come around and throw to the flanker, and Davis delivered it right on the money. He really did. The ball went right through his hands. It would have been a big gainer. Well executed play. It was right there, too. It was Appleby in Washington that hooked up in that big play that won a game for Georgia a year ago against Florida, but this time the ball slithers through the hands. Of Dean Washington and drops in complete. Second down, 10. Ray Goff hands it to Kevin McLee. Kevin McLee, a young man from Pennsylvania who has become the second Georgia Bulldog in history to run for 1,000 yards in a season. Frankie Sinkwitz, the great old tailback, was the man who did it first. And McLee was the second. We've been able to complete that long pass. They've been down there in great field position, and uh, there's still uh, 9.45 left in this football game. But they are in trouble. Yep. Mark Wilson, number eight, in wide, left. Jordan. Locked up the ball. Penalty flag down. Pittsburgh, I think, covered the football. Let's see about the flag. Looked like Al Romano was on the bottom of the pile. Exchange fumble. I don't know what the official called, but it was, looks like they did mean to give it to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's ball. Right. Georgia illegal procedure. I don't know whether the, it looked like maybe the center snapped a little bit late. Goss started to pull away, and uh, that had been a problem on the exchange. See Romano right here, number 91. You see the ball fly out to his left side and recovered by the Pittsburgh. I can't tell what the number Chesley, is there. Chesley, 55. Chesley. Mm -hmm. And so here's Pittsburgh with a great opportunity just outside the Georgia 22-yard line. As Kavanaugh gives it to Dorset, and Tony is hit. After maybe a yard by Ronnie Swopes, number 78 in red. I'll tell you, you know, trying to harness that Dorset for 60 minutes is an almost impossible task seen him do it time and time again in a four-year career, and he's done it again today. There's almost a carbon copy of O.J. when the juice was tearing him up at Southern Cal. He yeah. like that. You'd hold him for 35, 40 minutes and bang. They're durable. They just run that ball, keep it. Kavanaugh pitches to Dorset. And Mark Mitchell comes across, number 24, from his safety position to knock Tony down and picked him up. Mark really flew up there, good support by the secondary. Not very big fella, 5'11", about 172, but he moved up there with good support. I think he was standing on something when they measured him. <laughs> I'm not sure he's that tall. He may not be, he doesn't look that tall. He sure plays hard. The ball is at the 22. It's third down and about nine and a half yards to go for a first down. <laughs> Kavanaugh throws for Jones, and he drills it in there. Same pass. They come out with a uh, unbalanced line with a double flanker to the right, and they just come driving down the field. Kavanaugh fakes the run, the option to the right, and then he delivers the ball. It's well covered here. Mitchell's there, but uh, so is the ball. Inside the 15, where it is fourth down and about two yards. Carson Long is in for the field goal try. Kavanaugh now a 10 out of 17 for 197 yards and passing. Well, that's a big story in this game, I think. Larry Swider's hold the kick by Carson yeah, Long. Good. 31 yards. Good. And the Pittsburgh margin goes to 24 with 7.35 to play in the game. 27 to 3, the Panthers lead. 
University of Pittsburgh is going to win this national championship. Everyone will remember the big heroes, Al Romano, Tony Dorsett. One man whose name may be forgotten is perhaps, in a sense, the biggest hero of all. Tom Usick, senior quarterback, probably won't play today. He had never played more than six or seven plays. Before a time early this year when Robert Haygood and Matt Cavanaugh, both of the top two pit quarterbacks, went down with injuries and suddenly John Majors was desperate. Tom Usick stepped in and played mistake-free football, steady football for three games, got the Panthers through the crisis, and then gave the job back to Cavanaugh and went back to the sidelines where he spent the rest of his career. A walk-on, but a big hero, Tom Usick of Pittsburgh. Hey, old Tom, has been very useful, too, in preparing teams because he's gifted enough that he can keep that Pittsburgh defense interested in the practice session. That's a big factor. Long kick to the goal line. Coming up at the two, it is Washington. Trying to break out of the pack, can't do it. They get him up around the 18, 19-yard line. 17-yard return. 7.29 to play in the game. And you see a lot of people here looking up, looking up. Well, they're looking up at the screens that are hanging over the top of the Superdome to Stevens out. <laughs> Some of the coverage up there is apparently taken from our documentation of the game, and some of it is not. Everybody sitting down on the bench, looking up, watching the ball game on television, and it, their vision happens to be obscured from the sideline. Matt Robinson now in it, quarterback for Georgia. Goes to the sidelines. The pass is complete to Jeff Tyburn. Tyburn out of a running back position, a freshman out of Athens. Gets it up across the 30-yard line to about the 32. That should be a first down. I mentioned earlier that Al Romano and Tony Dorsett will be among the large group of outstanding college football players who will be off to Hawaii to play in the Hula Bowl, which you'll see live next Saturday at 4 Eastern, 3 Central Time. All the most of these ABC stations, Ricky Bell is going to be there, Vince Farragamo from Nebraska, Rick Schlager from Notre Dame. It will be an outstanding group of athletes who will have fun playing in the Hula Bowl next Saturday. Matt Robinson. Throws it, has almost picked off by number 14. Just almost stolen by the monster man, Jeff Delaney. It's amazing, each year in that little ball, the top player in the country. Mark, Mark Wilson, uh, the intended receiver, he's from Cross Brook, Florida. I used to drive through there once in a while, going down to the <laughs> Not related to Big Mike Wilson, evidently. Second down, they need about six inches. And then a small prayer to get it going again. Pittsburgh arguing for the interception. I think it's Romano had put the heat on, and uh, James Wilson was a man who tried to uh, make the interception. Took a little skip off the uh, turf. Cut it on one bounce, doesn't count the football. We're talking about uh, reference to six inches. I don't want to be a mislead you, but you talk in terms of six inches. A couple of times in the, in the ball game where just that much would have made so much difference where Georgia could have completed a pass, where Gene Washington might have caught the ball over here and held on to it. Tony Flanagan, number 11, comes in now. With 7 10 to play in the game, and Tony Flanagan at quarterback is smothered by Randy Holloway. Oh, yeah, Andy Holloway it. sensing a kill, realizing that a uh, youngster, a sophomore out of Atlanta, was in for one play, and he just pumped up and came and got it. Pitt Holloway is a name that will be very prominent next year. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, he's a great football player, and I'll tell you, this Pittsburgh team has very, been very impressive in all phases of the game today. Lucky Dillon, hard rush, but gets it out of there. And it takes a Georgia bounce. Sure does. Bounces down to around the 20-yard line. That's 54 yards off the punt. 6.31 to go in the game, and it's Pittsburgh 27 to 3 over Georgia. The American Eagle. Goodyear's symbol for its all-American kind of radio. I don't think that's intended to be tapped yet. Here's Pittsburgh now, just inside the 20, with a commanding posture in the ball game as Tony Dorsett. With 190 yards, picks up a couple more. We'll give him about 194, and penalty flags are flying now as we get a scuffle down inside the stack. It's one of those guys that you look like a retaliation on the part of one player, and you wonder which way it'll go. 
sometimes don't see the first one. Right. The second guy that gets the uh, penalty assessment. While they're talking, I think it's quite obvious and quite fair to suggest that Pittsburgh has won the national championship in college football for 1976 because they have been the most impressive and dominant football team in here against a very good Georgia team. Here's the scuffle. Let's see here. Well, they call it probably right a double header, one on each side. I don't think it was anything uh, malicious. Frustration. Yeah, right. All is at the 24, second down and six. Kavanaugh gives up to Joseph. And he has that little skip when he gets in motion, which makes that linebacker sort of take a look before he commits himself. You know, Keith, I think the other thing that is significant in this uh, great accomplishment of the Pittsburgh Ball Club and Johnny Majors is that he's taken his team and progressively gotten better each season, where he's brought him to what appears to be a national championship. And prior to that time, and I can speak from experience on that point, is because we played Pittsburgh uh, when I was at the University of Notre Dame, and they were struggling and having trouble. But the right combination of circumstances, the, get the right players, the right coach, the right motivation, get all the pieces put together, and the end result here is a uh, potential national championship, five minutes and 57 seconds away from it. Tony Dorsett gains another yard. He will have the Super Bowl rushing record, beating Eddie Prokop's record of 199 yards, which has stood since 1944. On third down and just inches to go for the first down, the quarterback, Kavanaugh, keeping going for the first down, it would appear that he made it. There's the time, which now is the definite ally of the Pittsburgh Panthers. There's some trivia for you, Era, that only one other Heisman Trophy winner ever won the national championship with his team and played in a bowl successfully. He was a little bitty fellow. Weighed about 152 pounds with a couple of rocks in his pockets. <laughs> now you got me guessing. I'll tell you in a minute. Kevin I'll give to Dorsey. Got at least a yard out of that play, so he's over 200. Give him two yards, make it 201. Well, a few times you'll see him uh, the wrong way. He should have put, he could look to the outside. I think he'd have gotten a lot of yardage. The fellow's name is Davey O'Brien from Texas Christian University when they beat Carnegie Tech 15 to 7 in the 1939 Sugar Bowl. Davey had uh, 17 out of 27 for 225 yards and kicked 20 yard field goal. But now Tony Dorsett has put his name to the Sugar Bowl record book with 201 yards and he didn't prove. Well, he gets another one the hard way. He really got pinched that time. Number 59, Lewis Friedman, really popped him. You know, uh, watching Dorsett through all these years and the remarkable yardage that he's piled up, uh, his durability has been Admire. Right. Backs carry that ball a lot of times. You got 11 guys shooting at him, going after him every play every time they have football. And uh, he's in the line of the OJs and the Ricky Bells. And although he's much smaller than both of them, he's been very durable. It's third down and seven. Going down the sidelines deep for Taylor. Did he get it? No. Momentarily. But almost, I'll tell you. Bobby Thompson playing him just as tough as he could possibly play uh, without Colin, uh, it still had Taylor almost come down with it. And now there's four minutes exactly. That's the play of this 43rd annual Super Bowl football game. The word will get around to Michigan and Southern California as they hitch it up for the Rose Bowl game later today. And Pittsburgh has been impressive. Larry Swider, Ooh, long, big one. They'll let it go, and they'll mark it down around the 13-yard line. That was a beauty. 54 yards by Larry Swider. Johnny Majors winding up his losing career in Pittsburgh and heading for the hill country of Tennessee, his home. He becomes the football boss at the University of Tennessee. Tomorrow afternoon, ABC Sports kicks off the new year, returning three great sports series. Super in Eastern Time, Superstars featuring the veterans, at 3.30 Eastern Time, the American sportsman with a shark beating frenzy in Australia and Candace Bergen learning to drive a high-performance race car. At 4.30 Eastern Time, ABC's Wide World of Sport. That's all tomorrow. 
And here's Flanagan in at quarterback. Flips the pass downfield. In the hands of Leroy Felder, who's already intercepted one pass today, knocked down a lateral and recovered it. <laughs> He's going to walk into the end zone down there if he'd have hung on to the ball. That's intended it. for Mark Wilson. Number 37 has had a big day. He's leaving now. Larry Felton, number 28, replaces him. He's from Cordial, Georgia, playing at Pittsburgh. Second down 10 from the 13. Flanagan going wide. Maybe a yard. Val Chesley, 55, brings him down. Chesley is a sophomore. He'll be back next year. There's TD. A lobster? <laughs> A couple pictures on it anyway. It's third down and nine. Flanagan, having lost part of his shirt, trying to throw it. Throws it incomplete. Pass intended for Mark Hodge, 88. Wide open. They just had a lot of bad luck today on their passing game. Uh, they've either been overthrown, underthrown, or they've dropped the ball. Bucky Diltz is now in the punt for Georgia, and Bucky's had a decent sort of a day. He's punted seven times for a 47 and a half yard average. Wow. He's really been putting it up there, too. Jones is deep. Soft spiral. That's Taylor. He's going to back up and take it. That one big block there. Gets it back to the Georgia 49. 45 yard punt and the 11 yard return. Here's Jim. I'm on the bench with Tony Dorsett, who's had another in the long, long string of sensational games. Tony, congratulations. Thank you, Jim. I tell you, it couldn't have been a fire the final time for me before to have it to me and my team. You know, we were going for the number one national championship and I don't think it could have happened on a better day. You know, people talked all week about you and your teammates carousing, being on Bourbon Street, having the late curfew. I think there must be a maturity on this team that's somewhat special. Well, definitely. You know, we, well, we're senior orientated, and, you know, Coach Majors is he considered this philosophy is that a bowl is a reward for an outstanding team. So you go down, you have the main priority is to win the ball game, but you're supposed to have fun also. A lot of you have played together for four years, and I'm sure it's occurred to you this is the last time you're all together. Well, you see, we're all. I was up right here right now, you know, this is the last time we'll play together, and it's been great, you know. You know, it, I, it I couldn't get a better thrill out of beating a team other than George, you know, because all week the fans are staying in the hotel with us, and they've been aggravating us all week, and tonight, you know, we're going to be in the Tony, quite a Cinderella story. Four years ago, this was one of the worst football programs in the country, and now I don't think there's any doubt that you're number one. Well, we like to think that way. You know, we, we put a lot of hard work, a lot of sweat, a lot of sacrifices into this. And we come from number 100 to number one right now. And we feel right now we are the deserving number one team in the country. Did the talk of the Rose Bowl coaches get you up a little more? Well, you know, uh, not really the Rose Bowl coaches, but Woody Hayes said that we backed out of the Orange Bowl, went not to back into a national championship, which is, what was not true. Uh, Georgia's the number four rated team in the country. We figured playing them, we'd be better. America rides Monroe. America rides as everything is light-hearted happiness on the Pittsburgh side of the field, and there's quite a deep bloom for the Georgia Bulldogs, as Johnny Majors now is playing everybody. Larry Sims is in the lineup, and it's like that. Tom Usick is in at quarterback. Tom Sindewall is in at fullback. Randy Rudishan is in there. Number 19 in a flanker position. Mitch Cooper is in. Joe Stone is in. George Link. John Sackett. Jim Bowie. Steve Gostaff. Everybody gets a chance to play, and why not? They've earned it. Marking off the penalty here against Georgia. Bulldogs frustrated. Came in with a 10-1 record. Very proud football team. Still a fine football team. I think Matt Cavanaugh and Pat Pizzoli really put the pressure on their secondary and really opened the game up. 34-yard line of Georgia with only 146 left to play in the game. Played much better in the second half. Keith, it's only six to three on a ball game in the second half. Right. As Sims carrying for Pittsburgh. And on the first down play from 34, he gets a couple of yards. 
Some of the Georgia people on the field now include, well, the Zambies are still out there, I guess. Brad Sescuti is out there. Bob Hope, Robert Hope is on the field. Billy Woods, Bill Trudge stays out. Swopes is still in. Lewis Friedman out there. Lawrence Kraft still there. Rodershan coming wide to the right side. Music on second down and eight. Keeps it, pitches it out. Here comes Sim. And Sim, if he could pop that crack right there, he could have been gone. We've got a new national champion, looks like, uh, Keith. And this is a well-balanced football team. They went through a difficult schedule opening up the season against Notre Dame there, which is always a tough chore. I can attest to that. And went through a pretty doggone difficult schedule. They're a well-balanced team. I think the thing that surprised Georgia is that this is not just a Tony Dorsett team. This is a football team that has a great teaching game, good passing attack, good solid uh, defense against the rush, and a good pass to compare. 45 seconds to play in the ball game now and time is called on the field. 46 seconds remaining, and Pittsburgh leading by a score of 20 to 7 to 3 at the National Championship in the Washington. 46-6 remaining in the ball game as Pittsburgh owns it just inside the Georgia 20. First down. Well, you know, Vince Dooley is disappointed, but I'll tell you this, 10 and 2 is a heck of a year on the... Bulldogs play extremely well during the entire 1976 year. As Tom Music turns it upfield, goes to about the 15, and we're told that the press people have voted Matt Cavanaugh, the most valuable player of the ball game. The executive producer of this 43rd annual Sugar Bowl game, Rune Arledge, coverage of today's game, produced by Chuck Howard, directed by Andy Sedaris, our technical director, John Allen, Jerry Klein, research and spotter, Andy Rich, our statistician. That's music. Trying to get in with 13, now 12, and headed for 10 seconds to play. He gets the first down, and that stops the clock with 12 seconds. And look at the Pittsburgh sideline. <laughs> oh, down there. Eight yard line. Johnny Major's already up on the shoulders of his team. Four, three, two, one. The game is over. gets a ride across the field as the Pittsburgh Panthers defeat the Georgia Bulldogs 27-3, a dominating performance. And I, for one, would certainly not quibble with anyone who says they are the National Collegiate Champions because they won all. And they won this big one convincingly. Left provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company, travel arrangements paid through, and promotional fee paid by United Airlines, by the friendly skies of United for you and the boss. This is the presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Pittsburgh, 27, Georgia, 